waste or but uh oh move Clicking time. Come on. I shoot it? I guess I shoot it. <coughs> okay. So, move hands to waist. That's my waist. I guess. Please insert cartridge. Ooh, hang on. Oh, I can. Ah, uh, pick that up. Cool. What's that? I can't even see it. What is that? That's a beef stick. Now leave the door open. Despite seeing Shady's entire figure, I shall not sin. 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 <laughs> um. Oh, can I? I gotta stop doing that. Oh, wait, because you guys are over there. Um, press to move. Oh yeah, it's that button. I don't like how it disappears, but. Oh. Uh, insert S settings. Um, version of startup English. You. Yes. Also, how are we doing for um? My frames, my frames are good. The black is pretty sexy. Halloween! Sin, happy Puritan, Sin! <laughs> HDR, I don't know what that means. LOD quality. Resolution high. Oh, shadows, oh my gosh, you make me go, th are they gonna, we have to go through all of them differently. Advanced CPU extras. Oh, that wait, there was something that someone said to movement. Fuck teleporting. Teleport. Oh, fuck off. Um, control scheme. Oh, there we go. Sadly, sadly, you are now sinning. <laughs> Sin happily. Oh, it's a. It's analytics. Advanced CPU extras. Yes. Apparently, that's supposed to be good. And they say LOD needs to be like. 2, whatever that is. Shadows. I don't really care about shadows. Character skin. Dead man. 
no idea what that means. Hand rotation, who cares? Subtitles, yes. Control the hips, can drop equipment. I don't know what that means, but I am happy in the moment. Guess we won't get much typing from Puritan now. <laughs> hey, one-handed typing. Ooh. So that's that. Alright. Uh, settings are done, I think. Oh, I'm right at the back. Holy crap. Whew. Move. Let me move. I wouldn't black out when I turn, but uh, campaign, having lustful thoughts, not actually choking the turkey. <laughs> campaign? Ooh. Who knows? Heard you gotta relax the throat, not to not try. True. No, I mean that's it. You just gotta force it down there. Where's my drink? I want my drink. What? Who said that? The fuck? <sighs> oh man. Hold up, folks. Can only avoid sitting so Never much. Thought I missed my alarm clock. <sighs> Whoa. Good morning there, ugly. <clears throat> well, all right. I guess I'll uh, do the nice thing here, Fred. Pull you out of your misery. Oh, talk sin, sin, sin. Oh, where is my gun? I'm pick you up. Locked and loaded. Guess this is it, Fred. Well, hey, I'm sorry things didn't work out between us, buddy, but, uh, I'm out of here. What, what can I say? Pew pew! No more seed spilling. Oh, I think I got it. Oh, I can put that on. Okay, I'm now, I am now a horror movie. Okay. Okay. I've got no more bullets. And I don't seem to have anything on my waist. So uh, Okay. Where is ammunition? Ammunition! Who said you have to spill it? Unless it's going in somewhere, but I'm not that flexible. Nice. Wait, who's it going in? Okay. Oh, let's just go with y'all. Oh, shit. Damn, Freddy. Got you good, didn't I? Oh, uh, gotta get going, buddy. Ooh, start the day. Hey, break a leg, ugly. No one would do it if he spilled was the problem. Ooh, my ammo belt. Hello. Hope okay. it still fits. Ooh, still got some ammunition left, too. Let's stock this baby up. Seems to be way too high. Hold on. Uh... Let me get 
get back to the menus. What? I don't know. That works. Eject empty magazine. Or yeah, alright. Time for some oh, okay. target practice. Oh, cool. There we go. There we go. Oh, yes. Oh, just on. Oh, hey, boy. Ah, there you guys are. I was starting to get a little lonely. So what's up, dudes? You know the rules, though. Don't get too close. Hey, don't get too close. Guys, what did I just say? Don't tutorial. get too close. You happy now? Oh, he's got no head. Didn't have to go Are down you? like this, you know. You could have sat down, had a nice cup of coffee, talked it through, but no. Well, I guess we're done here. Let's head out to that bridge I saw downstream yesterday. I'm fully healed. Since this is a Christian stream, but only holy bullets. This game is nuts. Yeah, it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool so far. It's just like walking around. I wish I wouldn't like. Blink when I uh, do the turn though. I need to start counting rounds, don't I? It's cool. Shits. Is that? Not Christian today, monkey. We sin in chat. That's right, horny chat, you know it! I'm taking a chance with you. Oh, hello. No, you're not there. Why now? Is up with you, buddy. Hey. Where am I? Aww. I feel like um, R2D2 or like C3PO going through um. <laughs> that didn't get. Alright, we'll have a look. Yeah, that's right. Right in the fucking face. A lovely dress and outfit, thank you. Sinning is allowed in chat today, as long as you don't break TM2, too, too, I guess. It's 40 sh- whoa! Okay.
I went through. Satan's wife is your cum tum. <laughs> Not even being horny, I'd like that outfit for you. Yeah, I'm, I'm so happy I found it. So, way too expensive though. Wait, so, I'm just trying to resituate my sale. Yeah, I can hear ya. Should have read that sign. Oh, hey! So damn hot. And Freddy over here trying to get a tan. Hey, Freddy, come on! So close, one more. No. Oh well. Oh, downstairs. Hey guys, wanna play? Come play! I can hear you. This is a fun game. Hey, a radio. It was one in my base. This is just still works. Someone's broadcasting something, but damn it! <laughs> All right, think, think, think. I need to find another radio. I gotta get to the source of this. Um. Come on, come on, come on, come on. No. I'm terrible at this. Throwing things at them works, so I'm gonna try that. Okay, gangster start works. Ear off? What is that? Uh, 
Ducky. Let's keep it. We'll keep my rubber ducky. That's cool. Break the one. Let me. Ah! Broken one. Grab this jacket. Nope. Steering wheel on the wrong side. Oh, this is America. Zombie lives matter. Zombie lives splatter! Oh. Yeah, looking at the Destiny thing uh, yesterday was fucking hilarious. He actually used a um, screenshot of himself sending a burning cross to um, a, a black person he disagreed with and like someday. used that like, to try Just and... Relaxing. I, I honestly don't know. Um... Really, so, um, Destiny, um, came out with a, a manifesto on, uh, Look at all these cars. about, Looks like um, went running from a horde. uh, Keffels. Well, speaking of the bastards. No. No, 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 no. Oh, hey, what's up? Dress, I think you would look amazing in that dress. Running out of bullets. 
That, that, that didn't help. That took quite a bit of ammo. Let's see if I can find some more in these cars. Oh no, 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 it's hilarious. Like, basically I can sum it up in three parts. One, um, uh, poisoning the well against Keffels and making, ma and basically trying to make her sound like a liar. Two, try to stand up for himself, um, by, like, inexplicably, like, showing some of the really shitty things he's done, um, which I don't know what... That serves to prove, but like I, it doesn't make him look good. <laughs> Sorry, dude. give hats that I can pick up. Oh, this might be an interesting place to find that ammunition. Yeah, yes. Zombie apocalypse, it's cool to steal from cops. Oh, another cop cut. Looks like it has even better ammo in it. Now where's the now where's the hummers? That's where I get that, that's where you get the really good shit. Seriously? No shotguns! None. Nothing. Is there a game where you can thank the police? Um, most games. Uh, Resident Evil 2? Don't you play as a cop in that? Um, crackdown? Come on, Arizona Police Department, where are all your shotguns? What? You have grenades, but no shotguns. Same ammo case. Well, well, refinery safe zone. Thank 
and for the good job they do keeping us straight safe from slick talking to them and no good. Fred once again brought all his friends. Maybe I can get around here. Hello, is that what I think it is? It is. Come at me, bro. Fucking salt cunts. Check it out. Hmm. It's locked. All right, I'm gonna need the key. Old Dutchman mine, huh? Underground tours. Well, at least underground means no sun. Oh, let's do this. Lucy, come to the mine. Stop saying my fucking name, creepy game. Wash your hands. Uh, that doesn't seem to... Wait. What? There's supposed to be a key in here, wasn't it? It's not.
Where am I going? I don't really need that one right now. Oh, I could probably use that for like the tough ones. Fred, what you doing? Chilling? Gotcha. I guess I'm out of range. Let's head to the parking lot. I wonder if I can put my hand in there and pull whatever's in there out. No, there's nothing in there. Lame. It's worth a try. Oh! Doors galore. <laughs> Can we get a drop shed? Yeah. Fuck yeah. Woo -hoo! CH, come to the mine. I hope she made it. Well, let's find out. Difference between these guns, I wonder. Yes, it still works. Let's check it out. You the good, the bad, and the ugly? Yes. Oh, a winch, huh? Look at this. That'll come in handy. Oh, shit! Turn it off, turn it off. Fuck! Here they come! Oh, hey, buddy.
the best! This is so much fun! Oh my god. Oh wait, that, that was dead. Oh, okay. Okay. So much fun in this game. I'm trying to shoot up for these laser ones. Damn. <laughs> that was a close call. Boys, I gotta go to the old man with my old winch. then. Here goes. Only one thing came can make this better thing. That's, that, that's someone subscribing for only five dollars off free with Prime. Yes! That's right. Top of the hour. Every hour. Nah. Ah. Well, that is the weirdest ass I've ever seen. Why is her ass so, like, dirty down there? She's wearing clothes on that spot. You'd think it's everywhere else that's gonna be dirty. Ah, oh, this is one of the big ones. Alright, uh, let's fuck this guy up. Close. It's way too hot out here. Oh, next level! Oh, damn it. My other watch went off. Hold on. Who was it? Ugh. Ah! I probably shouldn't do that with a gun in my hand. Hello? Anyone there? Fred, are you in there? People were here recently. I might still be around somewhere. Sorry, love. 
<laughs> oh, yeah, baby. Grenades. These will come in handy. I need to get through here. Let's see. Did I tell you? Thomas. Nope, nothing, Jason. Hmm? Nothing. US Army, come on. <laughs> On my way. Here's a gift shop. Mm. I'm so thirsty, I hope their fridge is stocked.
Damn it! I am not accurate at long distance with these guns. I want something with a scope! There were definitely people here. Let's look around. I find something useful. Seems like as good a time as ever to take a break and move on with some stuff. But nobody, nobody subscribed with for, for five dollars American or for free with Twitch Prime. Actually, well, that's what I should probably do. <sighs> 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 so much fun. Alright. Now, probably did praise for everyone there. It's still too high, it seems. No, it's way too high. There we go. That's how it's, that's how it normally is. Whew. All right. I really wish you get huge and make a boatload of cash. Well, I don't want to get huge again because it was so expensive getting small. Uh, quit. Steam PR has encountered a critical error. Well, I mean, that's okay because I was trying to exit it anyway. Oh, gosh. <sighs> All right. Gosh, that's such a fun game. And it's weird, it doesn't really like affect me like afterwards, so to speak. Which I don't I don't know what make I don't know if it makes sense, but like there's games like um there's games like uh Oh fuck. Words! I can't I'm not good at them. Alright, let's just move on to the next section. Cause I'm dumb. Now Oh yes! I was about to say, I know I put a um, candy bar around here somewhere, and then I looked in, I was I was in my ba my box of crackers, because, oh my gosh, how much do I love crackers? Like, you are what you eat, after all. Um, I, put my, I put my candy bar in the cracker box. Of course I do. <laughs> I really hope that I do get huge, so that I can, like, use, like, nepotism to raise up other smaller um, creators as well. That's like all I want to do is flood the platform with leftists. Okay. Now. Well, did, did you want to have a look at this um, hilarious um, thing? I think I can find it. This. Damn it. Heffel's um, manifesto.
Definitely not GG. What's GG? Also, it's on Substack, which is hilarious. Like, hilarious in its own way. That Destiny posts on Substack. Okay. What should I call this segment, though? Fuck, I need something on in the background. What's a, what's a video game with a really good soundtrack? Just gonna have um There we go, just have some some of the most chill stuff. Substack. Or oh, did I say Sunstack? Sorry, I am There we go. Something nice and chill. Oh, Stradigably is good, but that's, um, that, that'll be, um, um, what's the word? Um, copyrighted up the wazoo. I could at least open up a video game and listen to the soundtrack, so. Oh, give me a second. There we go. I was told. Let's go. Let's go. All right, so. All right. This is this is long, right? So I'm going to try and skip through a lot of it, because, like, why spend it too much time? So Bonnell's thoughts. Oh, gosh. Keffels, a case study on internet terrorism and mass media manipulation. This is hilarious, because you expect it to go a completely different direction than it does. For the last six years, progressives and conservatives have waged vicious war with one another across cyberspace. With cultural, political, and advertiser pressure bearing down on these social media, media platforms, conservatives have slowly found themselves in the losing end of the digital battlefield in the ongoing culture war. As their role flips from oppressi to oppressor, progressives have uh, sometimes found themselves embracing many of the same styles of aggression conservatives once engaged in. Okay. Well, the first, the first off, Destiny, like, conservatives, conservatives never stopped. Um... Secondly, progressives uh, do the whole, um, the fuck? Ah, there it is. Um, progressives do the same fucking tone, tone, uh, tone policing bullshit that, um, you're talking about right now, like, the idea that progressives are, are somehow oppressing conservatives at all for wanting to, you know, progress in society, 
just kind of says a lot about what, where your stances are as a conservative figure. Um, but yeah. Yeah. Hmm? Money. Subscribe for five dollars American dollars. Or for free with Church Prime. Ah. Yeah, free. Let me just finish this mouthful. I want a pint. Here's my biggest problem with all of this right now, okay? Heffels has some of the same controversies surrounding her that Destiny and other white male, uh, white, white cishet male streamers do. I guess you can kind of see where I'm going with this, but it's really interesting how people with who have relatively minor controversies surrounding them tend to be shut down and fucking mobbed if they are women, transgender, minorities in general, black, whatever you want to say. Hey based! Welcome! So, I just find it really interesting and hypocritical that people like Destiny who, like, as you'll see, does some shitty stuff, like, shittier than I've ever seen from Kef Keffels, um... <laughs> has any leg to stand on? This just, this just seems like, yeah, you, if she, if she was just a white cishet guy, you wouldn't care. In fact, Destiny, like, rubs shoulders with all of these people. I'm well, thank you, Base Project. I am well. Mm. But yeah. So Destiny says, In this exposition, I am looking to upend the prevailing media narrative through establishing a clear record of truth with regard to these key points. Keppel's initial rise to fame was through internet bullying and lies, not through righteous activism. There is not enough evidence to support the claim that Kiwi Farms has bullied anyone to suicide. Kiwi Farms was likely not the main culprit behind most of Keffel's harassment. Keffel's grossly misrepresented the events justifying her GoFundMe. The DIY HRT directory, um, which had uh, Keffel's full social and monetary support, engages in grossly irresponsible behaviour with minors. Holy shit. Oh, that's going to be an interesting one to go through. I never got... I didn't get that far, but like, here we go. You've got the... Look... Just these people and and their 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 air of self-importance. Listen to this: the ascension of Clara Sedenti. Bathtub hormones. Oh my gosh, really? Holy shit! So I'm not going to go through um uh his his uh look at the suicides because you know fuck you destiny that's not even like going into it but yeah so uh twitch tv and um yeah so like a wave of anti-trans legislation sweeping through the united states inspired her to switch her streaming content over to focus on politics with her eventually raising over 200,000 for the campaign for southern equality to protect trans youth she now regularly streams over to to over 1,000 concurrent viewers um so this is this is what this is where the bullying comes in Sorrenti made a name for herself on social media by directing her twitch tv chat to brigade targets uh sometimes even on her alternate accounts to pass blocks what are we gonna look at here did he did he unblock me or what no i'm still blocked hold on 
Oh, by the way, he's talking about Ian Miles Chong, like an actual like doxer who, um, who like, yeah, just he's a fascist. Hickorino time. He's literally still quote tweeting my Twitch chatters. What a fucking loser, dude. What a fucking piece of shit. What a fucking piece of shit. See what I mean? So like you might not understand what this what this means. So in Miles Chong um, is followed by a lot of uh, Nazi types. Um, so when people, when pe basically, um, doing that, re like retweeting, um, people who, uh, talk about Ian Miles Chong, re basically if Ian Miles Chong retweets someone uh, who looks like they're transgender or looks like they're different, that person will receive, uh, hate from their followers. Like, this is what happens. Um, oh, don't hate yourself. That's no, okay, both. Sleep well. Yeah, you too. Well. I will. Holy shit, what a fucking loser! And so this is what I don't understand about this manifesto. Destiny's like putting- posting this to like support his argument, but it doesn't actually like support his argument in any way. This is why I say he cares more about hypothetical um, moral frameworks than he does about actual praxis. Okay, cool. Yeah, I don't really care. I don't really care about that. Um, so ratioing them on Twitter. So he's salty about the ratioing bullshit. Talks about this, blah blah blah. Um, like so, she, so so he's got a problem with um, her uh, attacking Ian Miles Chong, who is a who's a fucking blight. He shouldn't be on tw Twitter. He like basically inspires violence against um, many people, including transgender people. He shouldn't be on Twitter. Like he uses Twitter to as a court to um, basically feed uh, doxing information to um, far right uh, types, to so that they can harass, threaten, and uh, continue to dox um, people in real life. He is like it's like that. It, it, it's part. He's part of the network which um, people use. Um. So, coordinating the brigading. Now, let's look at all of these things, hey? This is, it's just really weird, this stuff. So, like... Ratioing is an internet thing that only, like, people who are, um eternally online like people like me like I, I don't like nobody cares about ratios like the fact that people complained about this ratio bullshit like I, I I don't is is this normal that people actually care about this shit is this fucking normal this just seems like such 
when I hear the large streamers talk about shit, they talk like an almost different language. They, they seem actually scared of being cancelled and actually like care about this ratio bullshit. Like, does it affect your numbers at all? Like, all I can think of is that it would... Yeah, former Asian Nazi turned feminist, turned to and I stopped... He not former, not former. He, he, he's he's still a Nazi. Still still a white supremacist piece of shit. Um, I don't care, like, what race he identifies with. Like, he supports white supremacy. He supports white supremacists and helps their cause, so... I, I don't really care about anything anyone anything negative people anything negative that happens to him is like a net positive uh, for humanity as a whole um yeah so i, I don't understand uh, he seems salty about like uh ratioing these things my twitch shatters Okay, so this is the one that he sent earlier, where where he, she's pissed off that uh, he's um, um, basically uh, not doxing, but like um, creating um, problems for her users. Like if that happened in my case, I would be pretty fucking pissed off. I I believe in pra I believe in praxis over over um, hypothetical like morality issues. I don't give a fuck about like. I care about the material outcomes of situations, and for, to in my in my perspective, if like the material um, outcomes are beneficial, uh, overriding you know like optics issues or whatever you want to fucking like bitch about, um, then yeah, like fucking whatever, like like a ratio is fucking nothing. It's just making fun of people. Like yes, bully Nazis. What what? Uh, what what's wrong with bullying Nazis? I really want to know. This is fucking weird. Um, this is some like bullshit. Okay, I need everyone on board. I'm okay. attempting the biggest ratio I've ever attempted in my entire time on Twitter. Okay. Esther K, noted terrible person. So like here's the basic point is is that um Wow, he's just putting the oh, he's just he's just putting the same thing over and over again. Okay, cool. I don't understand though. All all Destiny is doing is showing the harassment that comes against Keffel and her viewers, and this is just a weird white supremacist behavior. You think replies? Sure. You are hate, like sending is it? Yeah, sending the audience like. So, um, a moderator of Kof Keffel Sulio Twitch users urged other streamers to cut ties with him. Um, I don't really care. I like you know like. But fuck Destiny. Like, who gives a fuck about Destiny anymore? He's just a, he's just he's just a fucking conservative at this point. Uh, blame their community. See a quote tweet a friend of uh... <sighs> You figured out why we were hate rated earlier? What happened? What was the hate rate about? I'm I'm interested. This is interesting. Okay. 
Oh, I see. It was destiny. I knew he was going to come after me. Oh, I see. It was destiny. I knew he was going to come after me. <laughs> All right, whatever. I don't care. What a fucking bitch. What a loser, dude. What a little fucking liar, dude. It's a weasley little liar, dude. Yeah, all right, yeah, yeah. It's that fucking thing. I mean, literal. But yeah. Uh, so it was 14 minutes ago, though. What is his original Twitter account? Okay. Fringest things. Like, this is just, yeah, like, this is fucking. That's apparently the time. Back down. What, what, what is this? I don't understand what that is. Alright, cool. If it, only evidence Sorrenti would ever claim that uh, that, that, he, that she shut down the radios by auto banning. We just ended the hate raid by modifying the bot in chat to ban anyone who follows De Destiny on Twitch. Like, this is this is really interesting. It stems from WS uh, white supremacy by most people that I might get caught in a hit point or no I get on the fifth stance over something I call respectability politics. Yeah. Basically, it's focusing on anything that's either bad man or hostile in anybody instead of God's going actually going on. Yeah, it's people who people who say like nobody likes angry people, like, but don't actually understand how revolution and actual change happens. Okay, but here's the thing though, like, so this this thing here. So a moderator blamed them, so the only evidence would ever p provide for the claim that um, the community hate- wait, what was the claim? So here's my problem with, um, with all of this stuff. This does not say that- this didn't- th this- I'm only going by what uh, Destiny has uh, posted here, but this, d d can you please, uh, can somebody t p please uh, tell me where this actually says that uh, she's blaming Destiny for this? This just seems like, oh, okay, so we, ba so we did, we, we um, banned anyone who follows Dest Destiny on Twitch, and it worked. That's it. This is just a material fact. It's just material, uh, material evidence. So like, it should, should be, like, here's my issue with this is, is, I, he says, claims that because there, he was the second largest political streamer on Twitch with over 650,000 followers, it should be no surprise that auto banning all of his followers uh, would slow down any new raiders. Um, as the same effect would likely have been achieved if she banned all Hassan or, or, or um, idiot followers. Like, he provides no fucking evidence for this source. None. Like he, he's basically he's framing this in a very certain way as if he's being attacked. But at the end of the day, it doesn't look like he was being attacked. Someone in you know, so the moderator in her chat said that um, they think they thought that Destiny had something to do with it. She reacted. They added the mo the the bot and it worked. Doesn't seem like anything happened. Also, like getting Destiny like uh, kicked off of Twitter, like is I don't know, based in Red Pill. Who gives a fuck? Uh, Sorrenti would rather claim in the same stream that. Uh, okay, let's have a look. It's 
It's funny that people in his replies um, are still trying to tell me that Destiny stands for trans people, but literally talked about how he supports segregation earlier this week. You can't simultaneously say you support trans people and say that trans people should have to compete in their own sports leagues. You're literally advocating for segregation. That's fucking insane. That's insane people talk. These are all clips that Destiny has posted, which is supposed to, like, support his argument. He's living on a different fucking world! Anyway, like... And inse instead of, like, because he supports segregation, so obsessive that the single issue is, is enough to raise the numerous supportive debates and conversations they've ha he's had on his stream um, regarding trans issues. All right, um, I, let's have a look. Um, let me just. What, what was the what was the 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 uh, bathtub hormones and spy game section? Uh, we, we should have a look at that. Um, who, who gives a fuck? Um, this is the this is the stealth people. Oh yeah. Meanwhile, he stealths people, which is legitimately a form of rape. So she read out the, um, chatter there. <laughs> Insane. Insane shit. Yeah, I don't know much about that, uh, that claim. I just appear- I just feel like, um, um... I love that several months ago, the fuck he said this? that if a trans woman does not disclose she's trans before having sex with someone. They are a rapist. Okay, I mean that's that's a fucking old one. Like I've 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 um had that conversation. The fuck is stealth? It's it's uh, saying that you're wearing a con lying about wearing a condom, basically. Basically, it's what Julian Assange got um got done for. It's what it's Julian Assange did, apparently. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so he's never, according to Destiny, he's ne never stated that a trans person failing to, to disclose their trans identity before having sex with someone makes them a rapist. And um, let's see um, what he uses it. I have never stated that a trans person failing to disclose their trans identity before having sex with someone makes them a rapist. Source? The omni-liberal tweeting that if you mislead someone relating to missed sexual organs and they discover it as you're engaging in sexual activities, that's tantamount to rape. These are the same fucking picture! That can't be a real thing, you can def tell. Um, <clears throat> drunk. Fucking hell. Literally, literally saying the thing. He's literally saying the thing. This, the, what the fuck are you talking about? How can you be this brain broken? He's literally saying the thing. Am I going crazy? Please, please tell me I'm going crazy. <clears throat> you know, one of my best sexual encounters with someone was when neither of us spoke about each other's private parts before we went into the bedroom. We just sort of like, we talked about the fact that we wanted that, yes, but both of us spoke about that. It's like, that'd be fun. That's a fun idea. That, we were just like, oh, that's a fun idea. Like, because like, they knew I was trans. And they didn't know what was down there, and it didn't worry them because they were they they they, they were uh, they're bisexual. But like, 
yeah, th th this is literally. So, for those of you who don't realize, this th this is a um, a transphobic dog whistle that is used by um, the alt right and um, gender critical people to claim that trans women who pass, because of course uh, non binary people and trans men don't exist to these people. Um, that they their one the number one claim is that uh, trans women um, are trying to um, uh, coerce people into sleeping with them, which is false. Uh, their second claim is that um, trans women who don't tell you that they are trans uh, before having sex with you, whether you know whether you notice the organs or not. Um, so this is pre or post op um, is rape. Um, and, uh, yeah, three, that, um, not disclosing that you're trans is right. Like, this is, this is him saying the thing. This is a distinction without a difference, but, like, not even the distinction. This is the same picture. Like, this is what you said. This is literally what you said. I, 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 I... This guy doesn't understand what why people hate him. I, I, I think. Hey, check him out. With a girl, and you bring her home to have sex or whatever. Oh, fuck off. Okay. Oh, fuck that. Yeah. You. This is just like th this entire thing is just a dishonest reframing of things. So the the, the original claim was he was literally defending a neo-Nazi who called her called her a man, right? And his response is to say that he never retweeted, liked, or endorsed any transphobic attacks against her. <clears throat> what Kefels is saying is Destiny is supporting Lauren Southern, who is a white supremacist who has called her a man. Like, and he links the tweet as well. Like, none of this. Th okay, we can throw that one out as well. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So trying to, yeah, dox, dox the, in there. So an interview between Joshua Moon showing his support for the website while his chat. Um, doesn't. Here's what's interesting. Doesn't say anything about his support for uh, Kiwi Farms. I, I will, I'd, I'd like to. Basically, a lot of this is um, his his vo his word against hers. But the fact is, he's actually like debunking his own arguments with the with the um, sources that he's showing. He's either showing no sources and his own opinions, or 
showing how he can't fucking like understand so he seemed to understand the shit that he's doing wrong this is amazing oh this one was nice uh, she claimed that uh, he mocked her for being a childhood grooming victim and uh, this is how he responded to that trigger warning um, abuse like ugh. Look at this. This is fucking sickening. So I was, uh, when I am um, turning 28 this this month, I was not groomed, I was not abused, I love my life. To all the tr young trans people out there, there's nothing wrong with you, the only people who are wrong. I see you bitching about trans people or trans and I uh, had a bad experience with the trans person. I was actually gro gro groomed by a gay man and I did not, do not spend my time attacking gay men or gay culture as a result. And then, like, fucking making fun of the fact that, like, she's not being consistent on Twitter in two tweets. Like... Uh Oh my Oh my gosh Oh my fucking gosh Destiny you're a fucking idiot Holy fuck Was he fucking drunk or high when he wrote this? No, fuck Destiny. Fuck Destiny. Let me show you the context to this fucking conversation. So, I was hoping that this would be a uh, response, but honestly, let me explain to you for a second the context of this. I was 16 when I came out as trans. I'm 20, 28, turning 28 this month. I was not groomed. I was not abused. I love my life. Do you know what that fucking means? What? This is the fucking problem with right wingers using the word grooming in this way. It means that people don't know the difference between actual grooming and fucking being trans. Right wingers are fucking idiots. Do you understand? She was not saying that she's never been groomed or sexually abused. She was saying that she was not being groomed or abused into becoming transgender, which is the prevailing narrative by right-wing commentators. You fucking idiot! Destiny, you're a fucking idiot. Let's see the context of this tweet. So this, in this tweet, she's talking about the actual, real grooming that she encountered and real abuse that she encountered, right? The real grooming, actual, you know, actual definition of it. Also, it's really interesting that people are responding to her with this stuff. This, the, I've never seen, I've never seen him be that fucking dishonest. You have to be absolutely high, drunk while writing this, or actually fucking actively dishonest. If you do not understand the contextual distance, I, I, and, and I've watched enough of Destiny back in the day that I know that he's not this fucking dumb. He's not that fucking dumb. He'd have to be either high or he knew. Holy shit, what a fucking idiot. Also, what a fucking scummy thing to fucking tweet. To fucking tweet. I know how to word. Holy fucking shit. And someone fucking said it here. I can't, I can't look at it, unfortunately, but like, she obviously means she was not groomed into being trans, Destiny. Obviously. 
Obviously. Fucking piece of shit. Holy fuck. Fuck off. Fuck off. Yeah, he mocked him. Mo he mocked her for being a childhood grooming victim, so he set the record straight. Um, it followed him by, by him mocking me after forcing me to reveal an, an extremely traumatic uh, experience. And then he, oh, and then he made fun of it. I never wanted to be this vulnerable, but I just can't help but post more and more revealing details about my past online in order to get sympathy and donations and money from people. Please feel sorry for me and see how horrible my life was. Remember to like and subscribe. What a piece of shit. <laughs> this is what he's using to defend himself. This is fucking hilarious. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, where are we? Here is Destiny posting my Kiwi Farm thread that includes my dead name. So it's like not only did Destiny post my Kiwi Farm thread in chat, he's posting my dead name in chat. The reason why he posted this is because the person above, the person above, Pintle, right? He tried to post it and he got timed out, so Destiny himself posted the thread. Just reading through the comments. Doing my due, due diligence. So wait. So wait, 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 wait! He just fucking showed a screenshot of himself posting a link to her Kiwi Farms account. No matter what the fucking reason is. Of Kiwi Farms page, see the fucking fuck. Oh yeah, no, the fuck. chat's a the chat's a nightmare because they um because a nut. Destiny decided to fucking brigade me on the day that I got banned from Twitter. So this is just a thing that we have to deal with today. Think you could use a vacation for the relentless harassment? There is literally no avoiding it. Like you see it happens on Twitter, it happens on Twitch. Mostly from Destiny and Destiny's community. But other places as well, conservatives, Nazis, fascists. I don't know, they all sort of like amalgamate together. Tender queers are based. Yeah, okay, okay. Uh, like, yeah. No evidence that, the, that his community was a primary, primary. The fact that he. The fact that he, he post. He like admitted to posting the link himself. Holy fuck. Like, none of this fucking. Uh... Yeah. 
open yeah also here's an interesting one on december the 12th she claimed that he uh threatened to rape women and posted burning crucifixes in the replies of black people um okay so okay these this is the, the these are the two which pretty much summarize this whole section and sh summarize the fact that destiny is fucking brain broken like whatever happened to joe rogan happened to destiny I have never threatened to rape anyone. I made an incredibly inappropriate tweet towards someone seven years ago during a heated exchange, but it was not a rape threat. I have since apologized for it and recognize it was not a an appropriate tweet to make. I'm not reading that out. I'd just like to remind people that when you are a huge streamer with a huge audience, saying that you hope something bad happens to another person is stochastic terrorism. There will, in if you have millions of people listening to the words you say. There is a chance that at least one of these people is fucking insane enough to take the action on it. And that happened in the case of the Sandy Hook Alex Jones trial. <coughs> well, not in the Alex Jones bullshit. In which a mentally ill woman stalked one of the parents of the kids that had died and left him countless um, voicemails about how she 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 uh, of her claims that he was raping his uh, child who had not died in the attic every night. Like when you say things like this, your followers are listening to you. You have to be brain broken not to understand the parasocial relationship that goes on. And I don't think he understands this shit. <coughs> Either that or it's an act and he knows and he just, you know, he's just covering his, covering his ass. Okay, second one. This one's fun. The burning crucifix image was post once and it was during a period where I was fighting with black nationalists based who were trivializing historical and contemporary racism um, against white people, based, um, on Twitter. While it's an unnecessarily edgy and an obviously inappropriate tweet, it was not done with racist intent, which is clear as I was in the comments arguing about the disadvantages black Americans faced in the United States. Apparently, this is not racist intent. Fucking hell. It gets worse as I scroll down. He's using this as proof that he was in the right. And and he's 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 blaming black people for their own oppression in this like uh, does it get better or worse holy fuck 
when someone throws your race it, nah, I try my hardest but when someone throws my ra my race in my face I kind of stop caring well wouldn't it be fucking nice to have the privilege to do that as a black person fucking hell um this one I don't know anything about her uh, I don't really give a fuck This is just the normal shit. This is just painful. Painful. Anyway, like, that's how this stuff, this this whole shit fucking goes. Who are the doxes? Don't care, don't care. Let's, let's, uh, let's, I want to find the, um... The GoFundMe heist? Yeah, this is, this is basically um, him claiming that she was lying over the stuff. Alright, bathtub hormones and spy games. Sorrenti and Chloe have worked together to promote the DIY HRT directory, a wiki that has been the subject of much mystery and controversy over the last past few months. There have been many claims about the improper behaviour and questionable services offered by the DIY HRT directory. After some thorough investigation, I'm offered to, uh, able to offer a bit of more insight into some of the problems that exist with this service. Uh, da -da -da -da. Sorrenti began um, supporting it, blah blah blah. Um, so people can access hormone replacement therapy before the age of 18. Yeah, who cares? Uh, stands by supporting that. Yeah, I had a link to on a website. Uh, final note, a long history of friendship. Like, I'm, I'm just looking at the, um, let's see, it was incredibly evasive. Uh, wait, what? On September 9th, Sorrenti was invited as a guest on the H3H3 podcast and was questioned about the DIY HRT directory. I watched this interview. Like, I don't know if we watched the same one. She was incredibly evasive. Didn't, didn't sound to her. Too nervous to offer up. This is the framing. He's, like, re framing it. Um, he, he's poisoning the well from the start. This is fucking hilarious. Uh, where, where they do the, the HRT directory promotion claims it's just a Twitch stream open and in the public. Yeah, I remember that. Uh, she, there's a separate directory she links to from her own website. Uh, original claim about home homemade uh, hormones. Well, it seems like... Okay. This also referenced min miners and pink pilling. So this is it. This is it. Supports miners to using it to acquire. Why she dodgy? She wasn't dodgy at all. What? What? The, I watched the entire thing. Like she doesn't seem dodgy at all. Like look, look at this. This is fucking hilarious. I guess one of their problems is that you are supporting young people, uh, young trans people who didn't have access to hormones you were direct telling them how to make homemade hormones oh my god i know i i don't know how to make homemade hormones i noticed the new thing is they're saying that i'm teaching people how to make hormones in their bathtub which just sounds insane that like, sounds difficult yeah i mean I yeah know how, how do you do that i think you'd have to be like a pretty talented chemist or if that's even possible i don't know I watched the whole interview. Like, I don't know why he's um, framing it in this way. Um, what ties are we talking about? Uh, 
Okay. What is this? What is this page? DIY hard charity, the ultimate guide. Yeah. Okay. You're a childish gutter mind and trash bag. I always hear hormones. What? Oh, hormones. Oh, I, I didn't even realize until I said that out loud. Yeah, okay, so this is just how to access stuff. Okay, so she- so this isn't about, um, how- homebrewing it yourself, for fuck's sake. A subreddit post of a bathtub HRT guide. Oh, okay. Yep. No. Uh, actual guide. Okay. Ah. Oh. Okay. Okay. So basically, they're saying that um, that um, Keffels is teaching kids how to make bathtub um, uh, medications, but you need to like click through uh, several different um, bits and pieces. So like this whole section here is about uh, yeah. It directly links to providers that homebrew. Yeah, okay, HO, sourcing raw estradiol and making it so these resources can, can be easily find uh, resources to make their own HRT at home. So basically, they're saying that just because they can, like, the people, you can go down the rabbit hole and learn how to do this stuff. But the, the, by that same, hey, Seventh, by, by that same, um, why, by that same logic, right? I could just say that oh, people who watch um, watch Destiny can like then become white supremacists because it's easy to go from Destiny to like you know Nick Fuentes and then onward from onward from there. Like same shit. So there is nothing on the DIY HRT directory which teaches people how to make fucking HRT in your fucking bathtub. In fact. Like, I don't understand the bathtub shit anyway, because, like, why would you make it in a fucking bathtub? Like, you, wh why do you need that much estrogen? I, I don't understand where these people are coming from. Oh, yeah. But yeah. Bullshit. All bullshit. He's just talking about the um pharmaceutical um places which you where you can order like direct um hormones from these people. Yeah. A bathtub HRT diet guide, why do they call them that? 
All right, so they're going into the Lena Kiev uh, site. Like none of none of this is on the DIY HRT directory. They just tell you where you can go to like source um, HRT, like like the, the gray market bullshit because you've got an awful place. Like I don't. It's clear to his team. Age warning is added to that archive. Yeah, but yeah, all the bu all the fucking bu bull bullshit. So apparently, Doc SWAT baiting. So apparently, that she she can't talk about where she's going, um, because you know, I mean, some people are SWAT. It's just like fucking hell. Victim blaming. We've got the victim blaming here. And they're called to action. Peewee Farms being an easy target to bully. Holy fuck. And this is a fucking claim. Apparently, that she did not need the money to repurchase supplies. She has no intention of suing the London, Ontario police force. Are you fucking kidding me? I I fucking laugh when people say that 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 um she stole donations. It's just like fucking. That's her job is to get donations. She's a panhandler. She's a internet celebrity. Do their homework when researching her. Maybe you should do the same. More concise statement for dropping Kiwi Farms. Misrepresentation of her situation. Um, yeah, I'm not going through that. Basically, he just lies um, with no sources. Just questions. Questions her. Um, her uh, fr basically reframes the things she says. Um, no, I did not. Fucking hilarious. Oh my gosh, and people- the, my- my problem is that, like, they, they- that he actually, like, people actually believe in his bullshit. It's fucking weird. People are fucking weird. Uh, oh well. Onwards and upwards, I guess. Oh. Here we go. <laughs> the Joe Rogan experience. I was just watching this very disturbing commercial yeah. um, yesterday with children 
and it was talking about ADHD and it showed a kid that was not paying attention in class mm -hmm. and it showed these kids like playing around and doing things they weren't supposed to be doing yes. and then they introduce this medication mm. and then you have the child raising their hand and then you have everyone clapping oh and you have God. the child with a big smile on their face and you've medicated your child to be a successful and integrated person in society. Shall I, shall I spot off about ADHD for a minute? Yes, please. So, like, it's clear what that, that um, ADHD medication does help uh, kids with ADHD. It's a, necess a necessary part of treating ADHD. We know how it works in the brain. It activates certain genes in the brain uh, to allow kids to, uh, kids with, well, it, to allow anyone with, with ADHD <clears throat> or people with ADHD to actually be able to concentrate more on the tasks that, that they're doing. It doesn't help completely with uh, some form of uh, high order thinking, but it at least makes it easier to, you know, get there. Um, other things like the, so the, the, there are other things which are, um, that surround ADHD, obviously, like abuse, bullying, and um, like we tend to end up with anxiety later on in life as a result of, you know, when you act without thinking a lot, you end up getting into a lot of trouble, and that can be traumatic. So <clears throat> often we have um, problems with anxiety and problems later on in life. Um, and even our parents might uh, be abusive towards us because they don't understand us uh, and things like that. Um, what you're going to see this guy do, this man, this man is has a history of um, pseudoscientific um, information about uh, ADHD. He uh, wrote his first book on it. Uh, he has done no peer-reviewed research. Um, or study into the neurology or anything to do with ADHD. This is all based on his own personal opinions. And uh, yeah, none of what he will now talk about is actually true or um, accepted within the medical community. It's all bullshit. It's all brainwashed rock. And uh, yeah, he's, he's got his he's got his stage right now to uh, talk about ADHD as if he knows what the fuck he's talking about. That was my first book on ADHD. It's the American Scattered or Scattered Minds, depending on which edition you get. And that was after I was diagnosed with it myself in my 50s. Mm. Um, what does it mean? ADHD? Yeah, what is it exactly? Is it real? It is a neurological disorder um, in the old lizard brain section, um, which has, we don't know exactly what causes it yet because we're still learning about how the brain works and all that stuff. It's very complicated, but basically it means that the um, emotional center and decision-making centers are undeveloped. They will always be undeveloped and it causes our ability to make decisions uh, very difficult. So that's why you'll see like a lot of distraction in ADHD people. Um, uh, I agree with mass amounts of overdiagnosis of medication of children because pe uh, kids are a square and school is a circle. Medicine is the hammer. ADHD is real though. ADHD um, should always be medicated where possible. It does solve problems. Even in a society which was accepting towards mental disabilities and all of that in a perfect society, I would still want to have ADHD medication because being and feeling productive, like I'm actually able to do things, is so freeing. Um, yeah. The treatment for ADHD is medication and external prosthesis. You need support from your community. You need support from outside. You need devices in your life to do those things that you are unable to do um, normally. Um, but unfortunately, external prosthesis is something which is not given to ADHD people. ADHD people really need support workers, people to actually organize their life for them, uh, which is not what we do. We just medicate. But like, I will always speak out against people who are uh, skeptical of ADHD medication. There is zero scientific evidence to say that the medication causes ADHD. That is one lie which people have talked about. 
uh, that has been debunked. Uh, there is zero evidence that ADHD medication um, negatively affects like children or is overdiagnosed. There actually is no evidence to say that it's un overdiagnosed. In fact, the evidence that we have suggests that especially in adults and in women and girls, it is severely underdiagnosed. And a lot of anxiety issues in adults can actually stem from the trauma related to growing up with ADHD and having no um, uh, support in your life for that. Um, yeah, there's there's no overdiagnosis of ADHD kids as far as I know. It should be biologically diagnosed. Well, we can we. The, the reason why it's psychologically diagnosed is because it's very accurate. And we can tell from taking medication and trying different medications if it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. And we move on to the next thing. It just depends on what's the easiest way to do it at the end of the day. The easiest way to biologically test the diagnosis is to figure out what medication works. And if none of the medications works, we move on to the next thing. And that's, that's the issue. We need to strengthen our um, me medica medication stuff. Hey, Riley, welcome back. I'm all right. I'm debunking some ADHD bullshit. Oh, it's real. But what does it mean? Well, like if someone has ADHD, it's not like you have herpes, right? Like you can say, oh, I've got, you got a disease. Well, uh, what is it? Well, they, that's the whole point. It's, it's not a disease. You can't catch it. It's heritable. And he's about to say, this man is about to say something which will just, which is so against uh, the understanding of ADHD, it's, it's just like, it's perfect for Joe Rogan. Perfect. That the medical profession and a lot of the so-called experts think about it as a disease, another one of these inherited diseases. In fact, they say it's the most heritable mental illness there is. And mm. I say- Heritable meaning that you, um, it's something that you get from um, genetically. It's a genetic, it's a heritable trait from your parents, genetically. It's neither an illness nor is it heritable. So the the hallmark are difficulty being. So so and what's, what this guy has just said is that the medical community says it's one thing. I say it's not. Attention when you're Source? motivated. Yeah. So kind of tuning out like that kid in the commercial. Like me. Okay. Poor impulse control, so that you tend. To well, I mean, like Joe Rogan smoked that much weed that uh, that, that 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 there's probably no distinction between him and someone with ADHD at this point, anyway. <laughs> To act out whatever emotion arises, mm -hmm. and sometimes the hyperactivity, difficulty sitting still, and then to fidget and all that, and that described me to a T. Um, <clears throat> and um, but which is one type of ADHD, but diagnosis. there are several. I knew something. This is not a disease, and it's not heritable, despite the fact that some of my kids were diagnosed with it. What is it? So it's not heritable. But your kids inherited it. Like, this guy is so far deep up his own ass. Tuning out is not a disease. So let me ask you a question, if I may. Okay. If I were to stress you right now, um, create stress, emotional difficulty or tension for you right now, what would be your options of dealing with that, of dealing with me? What would be your options? I could either get upset or I could leave. Exactly. Yeah. You could fight back, flight or fight, yeah? Mm -hmm. But what if you didn't have those options? Yeah, then you're stuck. And how, what does the brain do when you're stuck like that? It gets distracted. It gets tunes out. Yeah, it tunes out. You want to do other things, think about other things. In other words, it's a coping mechanism. Yeah, it's no. normal. I mean, the, yeah. the, the idea. And so what he's doing right now, which is what pseudoscientists and fucking like, yeah, hacks uh, like this um, do, is they look at the symptoms of a disease and then they claim that those symptoms are the disease. So he's talking about the trauma that comes with being ADHD as if that is ADHD itself. He doesn't understand the neurological um, disorder that comes along with it. He doesn't understand why medication works. He doesn't understand um, the heritability. He's talking about the coping mechanisms that you're forced to learn as someone with ADHD, which cause anxiety and depression later on in life because you are stressing your brain out to the nth degree on things that normal people find easy to do. Fucking amazing. Child who is uh, 
you know, an eight, nine-year-old ball of energy filled with, you know, hormones and life and thoughts and things they enjoy. Like, there's, like, he's not even talking about the reasons behind why hyperactivity manifests differently between different people with ADHD. Like, if we're talking about hyperactivity, the reason why adults don't tend to uh, exhibit the hyperactivity trait is because over time you internalize your external thoughts. The hyperactivity that you see in ADHD kids is very easily seen because they seem to be developing slower than emotionally and decision making at least, um, developing slower than other children. Um, which they are. They, there are certain stages in development, and if you go into the neurological um, uh, studies into how uh, we, our brains develop as children, right? We, our thought, we, 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 when you like, as you grow up, you go from saying everything inside your head is what you say out loud, and you slowly, that external voice becomes internal. And that's why you'll see kids go from, you know, talk, 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 talk externally. And then you'll, you'll still, at some point they'll, you'll know that they're thinking because they're mouthing the words, right? And then on and on and on and on. People with ADHD at certain are, we're all different, but some of us never actually learn how to internalize those thoughts. That's why we just blurt shit out without thinking. Or it seems like we're not thinking. But what we're actually blurting out is what you're thinking internally. We're not able to internalize those thoughts effectively because of our inability to process higher order function thinking, executive function thinking. thinking. Um, so, like, this is what we're talking about when it comes to ADHD hyperactivity. That's why it seems to go away. That's why for a long time they thought that you grow out of ADHD because it seemed like you learned how to use that internalized voice. What actually happens is you have to struggle to create coping mechanisms from the trauma related to growing up with ADHD and trying to um, stop yourself constantly from saying the things that are inside your head before you're able to make that choice. Like, it's fucking exhausting, but we do it, and that's why ADHD people tend to be tired halfway through the day and need a nap. Because we're spending all of our energy stopping ourselves from blurting out what's in our minds. And it's also, in my opinion, one of the reasons why stream ADHD is a big thing among streamers. Because part of what comes from speaking your mind, literally, is you come across as a very genuine person that people, like, connect to. Because you're so, you, you aren't... I'm not able to internalize those thoughts effectively. I'm just saying what's in what I would normally be thinking inside my head. I'm just blurting it out. That's the difference. There's a lot of I I'm I am like this because I have a mental disability. <laughs> I'm charismatic and fun to hang around because I'm disabled. <laughs> it's both exhausting because I'm forever scared of hurting people because I've hurt so many people unintentionally through my words and actions. Um, constantly. That pressure is constantly on me. That flight or fight thing that they're talking about right now is my fucking life. Now, medication makes it easier. But it does not allow me to do things that are outside my routine. So things do come trash crashing down around me. Absolutely. But like, I'm able to internalize my thoughts and really concentrate on what I'm doing a lot better. Like, focus on tasks. Like, it all comes down to executive functioning and the way our brains develop. That's... And this guy's just like, oh no, everyone, everyone gets... Uh, it's uh, spacey sometimes, you know, it's, it's, just, it's just a normal thing, it's just trauma. This is like, well, yes and no, it's trauma from being ADHD. Gender dysphoria is a depression 
related to the fact that you are transgender, don't you, you know, they're two different things. Like, you've got the cause, ADHD, being transgender, and then you've got the symptoms, gender dysphoria, depression, anxiety, constant flight or fight, lethargy, like, all of this stuff. Like, yeah, I can't express enough how much this fucking angers me whenever this pseudoscientific bullshit. But if you want to, like, get through this stuff easily, it's important to question whether they're talking about symptoms and identifying those symptoms as the cause, or whether they're talking about the cause and relating the symptoms to how the cause interacts with them. And that's the different. that's how you tell the difference between someone who is a scientist and someone who is a pseudoscientist. And this man is a pseudoscience. Well, I mean, this man up here is um, Joe Rogan. He's a weed with a bald head. Hey, Hoser for Life. And then you make them sit down. Yeah. All day in this yeah. unnatural state in a classroom with fluorescent lights and stare yeah. at a teacher that's unmotivated and underpaid and is teaching something in a very boring and non entertaining way. Yeah. And then if this kid doesn't lock in like a zombie, we need to medicate them. Yeah, well, the other. I mean, this is the thing. This is the thing. He's talking about normal kids. ADHD is not normal. And you shouldn't expect a kid with ADHD to act normal at any point. <laughs> Just making something interesting is not enough to overcome executive dys dysfunction. You need to have special external prosthesis and routines in place for these children. It's not about making lessons interesting and like sitting people down and being boring and you gotta make it exciting and stuff. You need to focus on them and the way their brain works and work out strategies. Oh, what, what link is it? What do you link? Part of it is that if you look at my infancy and it sounds like yours, we spent our first year or two under very difficult oh. circumstances, a lot of stress. Michael Mellis. Infants can't help but absorb the stress of their parents. Right. They can't help it. And what does happen. an infant do? Could I have escaped or fought back? Could you have? All we could do is tune out. Yes. But when is this tuning out happening? When our brain is being developed. Right. And our brain, this is the part that nobody taught me in medical school, but it turns out that brain science now teaches us that the human brain develops under the impact of the environment. So the, the most salient feature of the environment that shapes the circuits of the human brain is actually the relationship with the parents. And if the parents are present and emotionally attuned and available, the child brains develop properly. But the parents are stressed, the child is over stressed. What can we do with it? They tune out. And that tuning out thing is programmed into the brain. And then 10 years later or 50 years later, we say, you got this disease. No, you don't. You've got a coping mechanism that's no longer working for you. But mm. it, it had a function when it first came along. So this whole idea. There's absolutely no, there's no fucking evidence for anything he said here. He's done no research into it. He's just, this, this man is a hack. I can't believe that he spent so long as a general practitioner. It's fucking insane. And, and, and by the way, if a family comes to me with their ADHD child, I'll say to them, what you've got here is a very sensitive child. That sensitive child is picking up on all the vibes, energies, and stresses in your family. Want to help this child? Deal with the whole family. Look at the parental relationship. Look at how what stress. Let me tell you. Okay. Question. ADHD is a heritable disease. Now, for someone, especially someone undiagnosed and without medication, it's very hard to have happy and healthy relationships when you are unable to perform proper uh, higher order thinking to do, uh, to complete tasks which are outside of a daily routine and to like, talk to people without blurting out whatever's in your head and be, you know, like mindful of other people and being, having the ability to do that. It's not something you can learn. Like that stuff is not, some people don't have the ability to do that. All right. Okay. If your parents 
seeming as is a heritable trait, at least one of them has um, some form of ADHD or, you know, part that has ADHD traits because heritability is more complicated than that. It is likely that your parents may not have had a functional relationship, especially if they were undiagnosed, did not understand themselves or their partner, because people with ADHD do, well, I, as someone with ADHD, do struggle to um, communicate with people who are generally neurotypical. I find it easier to communicate with people with uh, similar disabilities to me um, because of the way our brains work and the way we can just connect the dots. We understand each other a lot better than normal people. Um, yeah, the parents are probably not going to have a healthy relationship. So that's me extrapolating from the cause of a, a disability and showing the symptoms that might derive from that. Now this man is looking at the symptoms, parents who are likely to have ADHD traits, not having a functional relationship because they're undiagnosed and untreated. Um, it's very likely that they would have some form of um, dysfunctional relationship causing stress to the child. He's looking at all of these symptoms and putting them together as the cause themselves without any proof. See, I can go back and say, well, with ADHD, you have a heritable, dis a her a heritable disorder, which we know is heritable. Um, we know that um, people with disabilities and with uh, problems uh, communicating do struggle to have functional relationships, especially in the cases which where there where there's like no real communication. There, relationships with bad communication are not functioning relationships, and that can lead to the abuse of a child. We're putting the cart before the horse here. We're looking at the symptoms and not the problem. This man is a pseudoscientist. He's trying to sell you self help. Wait for it. Wait for Today it. In your life, look at how you react to the child. Look at, do you understand the child's behavior or, or the emotions that the child is having? Or are you just trying to control the child's behaviors? Look at all that. And very often parents will tell me after they've read that book on ADHD is they've totally changed their relationship to their child. The child changes. What a surprise. Mm. But you go to most doctors, you got this disease, here's the pill. And by the way, I took those medications and they helped me for a while. You know, so I'm not anti- When you were in your 50s? Yeah, yeah. I'm not anti medication Which ones did you take? I took Ritalin, um, which uh, <clears throat> I can tell you the story. Sure. So- you know, one of the hallmarks of ADHD is poor impulse control, right? So, um, I found out about ADHD and... Yeah, and, and the what causes that poor impulse control is executive dysfunction, like, in the brain, is not being able to, like, internalize thoughts, not being able to... But basically not being able to think before doing something, because that's a part of higher order functioning. Even before I was diagnosed, I took Ritalin. And... In why, a, why did you take it before you were diagnosed? Because I'm a doctor and I could, hey. And oh, so you diagnosed yourself? <laughs> well, they did, and and, and so you uh, at least assumed that you had that. Didn't yeah, you? I, I knew I had it, and <clears throat> and but not only that, also because I had poor impulse control. I never practiced medicine that way. Hmm. I mean, if you came to me for any problem, my first impulse would never be to write your prescription, unless it was obvious that you needed it for an infection or something. I'd sit down with you and talk to you about what's going on here, but but not me. P poor impulse regulation. So I went to a co colleague of mine, a medical colleague. I said, Hey, Bev, I think I got ADHD. Can you some can you give me some Ritalin? So she writes me a prescription. And then I took it in a higher than recommended initial dose. And uh, because, I mean, if a little bit is good, then more must be even better. And again, it's not how I practice medicine. Right. But I came to myself, that's a totally different ballgame. <laughs> so I felt immediately present and calm and grounded and really? focused. Yeah. And it's a stimulant. And I went, well, it calms the ADHD brain. Then I go home and my wife says, you look stoned. <laughs> it, doesn't, it doesn't calm the ADHD brain. Like he's talking about ADHD as if he understands it, but he's not talking about like why things work in a certain way. Like it basically helps us to, it gives us more time to catch up with that higher order of thinking to, mm, to be able to, yeah, perform those functions. It, it activates genes in the brain, which were not active previ previously, which didn't develop, which weren't developing which didn't develop to um, activate on their own through development, like 
this is this is this is what the neurology why I'm not understanding the neurology of ADHD when these hacks talk about stuff falls apart because they 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 just dismiss like a huge part of what it means to be ADHD as just like oh you know that's just a symptom of it. It's, it's just <laughs> fucking ridiculous. Because you're calm. Because, yeah. yeah. Well, because I got this glassy-eyed expression and. <clears throat> Within a couple of days, the, dep- the Ritalin made me very depressed. That's one of its potential side effects. So I did see a psychiatrist. Yep. I was formally diagnosed, and they gave me dexedrine. And I took that for a while. That's an uh, amphetamine, isn't Yeah, it's it? an amphetamine. It's another yeah. stimulant. Um, and it did help me. I became a much more efficient workaholic, and I could do even work. <laughs> it didn't change any of my emotional issues, but it made me more focused no. and so on. It helped me write Because that. a lot of your emotional issues, especially if you were diagnosed as an adult, like even through even through my childhood, like I was um di- I, I was medicated, but it doesn't protect you from the inevitable failures that you face over and over again in life, which hurt you and create emotional problems like um the, like the, the having having major um uh, separation anxiety from people you know feeling like people are going to leave you because you know you've been left you've lost friends a lot before because of um thoughtless words and things that you can't help um and there's that feeling of uh, imposter bias as well um the the idea that you know oh i'm just lazy i'm just i i I, i'm just a terrible person like those sort of thoughts just bounce around your head like all the time and you don't have control over those thoughts because you're adhd it just happens and you have and you end up with depression and anxiety disorders because of the way that the the environment interacts with you but this is not the cause of adhd this is a symptom of ADHD. The first book. The so symptom I, of ha- th- th- there are symptoms which are of ADHD which are very individual, and then there are symptoms of ADHD which are caused by um, you interacting with your environment as someone with ADHD, and that's where he's not understanding this. I feel like a lot of these people don't understand that the way you interact with society has a has a huge effect on a person's psyche and that changing society to make it better for people with disability is going to be a much more effective solution in the long run than expecting um some someone you know in a wheelchair to uh, walk up a flight of stairs like effectively like what we're expected to do as adhd people and we end up with like like sending ourselves into bouts of depression and anxiety over not being able to walk up those fucking stairs because our legs are broken, figuratively, in our brains. Taken them for decades, but because also I know that the brain can change mm-hmm. if you treat it right. So this re- the reliance on medications that we have is is and and that's this is this is not true. This is absolutely ab- not even pseudoscience at this point. This is not true. This is not true. Reliance on medications does not affect your ability to deal with ADHD. Fuck. A real poverty of the spirit, a real poverty of imagination, a poverty of medical education. The average doctor never learns this stuff. The average physician never gets a single lecture on brain development, how the brain develops in interaction with the environment. So when you're seeing, and, and let alone do they hear Like, he's talking about stuff as if he understands it, but like, I, this is a physician with a, over a decade of being a physician, like gen, general practice, um doctor and i didn't even go to university i didn't even finish university i didn't even do medical a medical degree and i'm calling out his bullshit and he's gotten almost three million views on youtube don't know how much the original podcast would have you know this is all just bullshit and not true about trauma they don't hardly at all. Right. So when they see an adult with ADHD or depression or addiction, or or or, or bipolar conditions or or oh don't fucking or for that matter autoimmune illness fucking... or anything else, they don't think of trauma. They just think of this disease, and they think that the diagnosis explains everything. But the diagnosis don't explain anything. Because think about it. Let's say Gab or Joe goes to a doctor and uh, they they diagnose with ADHD. Well, why is what are the hallmarks of ADHD? Well, tuning out, poor impulse regulation, maybe hyperactivity. 
And why are those things, what, what causes those things? Just say what causes those things. Why does Gabor have poor impulse control, uh, hyperactivity and uh, tuning out? Because he's got ADHD. How do we know? No, because of the higher order executive functioning that we struggle to do with because our brains didn't develop. Like you talk about like studying brain de development and you don't actually even know anything about the development of uh, childhood. <sighs> And the way that executive functioning like develops through childhood, you've you've looked at the brain is a complicated thing, and there are so many different things that that come into it. The way we interact with the environment, like he says, is important, but he is also just putting the cart before the horse and making assumptions based on what he thinks is true, rather than like drawing his conclusions from the consensus within the scientific community, which I am. I know he's got ADHD because he's got poor impulse control, and turns out. And he's hyperactive. And the medication works. Why is he hyperactive? Tunes that have poor impulse control. He's got ADHD. Because he can't access those higher order functioning. And when the if the medication is working, then it's activating those genes in the brain. If it's not working, it's just acting like fucking speed, and and it doesn't affect the child's behavior in any way. Like we know this. This is this is why it's so easy to figure out. This is why, like, you can psychologically evaluate someone. You put them on medication. If it works, if, like, you find the right medication for it, because there's many different micromedications that work for um, for ADHD, there's some which are not stimulants which work as well. Um, different people, different works better, but effectively all of these medications um, activate certain genes within the brain. That's how we figure out if someone actually has ADHD. I have, I absolutely have ADHD because the medication works. If I didn't have ADHD, the medication would not work. How do we know if he's got ADHD? Because, you know, it doesn't, it's circular. It doesn't explain mm. it. It doesn't ex It's not circular at all. You're just dumbing it anything. down. You're just Diagnosis dumbing it down. Describe things. And that they're, they can be helpful that way, but they don't explain that, yeah, one of the things that yeah, people get because just because you don't know enough about ADHD doesn't mean that science doesn't hasn't explained it. Science has, you just haven't researched it or studied it at all. You wrote a book about it, but you haven't researched or studied it or like been involved in any any of the peer review process. You are not a sci an expert in neurology, you're not an expert in psychology, you're not an expert in uh, anything but being a general practice doctor who gives people sick notes like that you do it you did a good job for a decade but now you're just fucking up people's yeah, lives so they get it, it, they get treated for and they get diagnosed with is anxiety yeah and that one it's, drives me nuts yeah it drives me nuts because people pretend that anxiety is a disease yeah it's not and i'm like my god the world should make you anxious if you're a sensitive introspective person if you're just looking at the world itself and you you don't put it in perspective like the world's it's filled with anxiety the anxiety is f who treats anxiety like a disease and wait i'm not i'm not understanding please um Someone link me to someone who's talking about shit like this because I've never heard of it. It's future problem solving. You're you're thinking about all the things that can go wrong. You're thinking about your life in a you know potentially uh, devastating yes. way, and that's not. A and you would think, and 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 when you have ADHD and you're always scared of uh, doing the wrong thing because you've been like hurt so many times from being unable to do the right thing. Um, you spend most of your time trying to figure out ways to overcome this. You spend, your brain goes into hyperdrive over and over and over and over and over, constant, constantly, constantly, constantly. What could go wrong? What could go wrong? What could go wrong? And then something comes up, which you're not prepared for, and it fucks you up completely. That's what anxiety is. It's, it's, it's the way that your brain works in that sense, and it's just... Joe Rogan knows nothing about this. This GP absolutely knows nothing about this either. It, it's fucking ridiculous. Disease. That's just the way you look at the world and people getting mm. diagnosed with it. Well, I won't quite agree with you on that one. In what way? I felt anxious at times. The world, sure. The world every day is the same. 
if I the world is the same, but the way you look at it is not the same, right? That's the whole point. Yeah, so that's, that's what I'm saying. So the true, world is giving you anxiety. No, the world is not giving me anxiety. Right, you're giving yourself anxiety uh, yeah. by looking at the world, right? And by how I look at the world. Yeah, because I look into, I can look at the same world one day and feel grounded. And, and so, and so, the way that the world interacts with you as a child is 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 like. You, this is fucking ridiculous. So, like, he'll 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 bring up um, the external uh, way that the world affects you when it comes to like the abuse of children causing ADHD. But then he'll deny that there's anything but individual choice when it comes to anxiety. This is the pseudo scientific uh, wellness expert. Um, just think yourself into happiness. Uh, the secret. Uh, fucking selling you, selling you self help. That's what he's doing. He's made his money selling self-help books. This is what this guy does. He's just another self-help scammer. The only people that make money from self-help are the ones who write the books about self-help. And they've already made their money. And connect that and I mean I have all kinds of concerns about what's happening in the world, but I, my nervous system won't be on edge. My adrenaline yes. won't be flowing. I won't be anxious. That's my point is that it's not a disease. It isn't a disease. Right. So remember I talked about those brain circuits of lust and care and yes. rage and, uh, and, 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 and seeking and so on. One of the brain circuits that we have is described by a very prominent late neuroscientist, Yak Panksap, is for panic and grief. Panic and grief are the normal responses of the young human being or the young animal when care isn't available. Hmm. So when the parents are stressed, distracted, economically or politically, or because of their own unresolved trauma, or whatever's going on in their lives, and they don't respond to the child's distress, they don't pick up the child when they're crying, they make the child be alone when the child is upset, the child's panic. Yeah, 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 that's called trauma, that's not ADHD. Circuits get activated, as they should be, because when the child's panic circuits get activated, they cry for help. Yeah, that's so it's necessary for survival. ADHD a young is executive function when disorder. The adult is unavailable. In a rational world, in a sane world, that child would be responded to. But when children, as in our society, are not responded to in their distress, the panic becomes built into their nervous system, and mm. now you have a lot of anxious people. Mm. And that's why more and more kids are being diagnosed. You're right; it's not a disease; it's a response to the environment. And. The thought process of like leaving a child alone when the child's crying, is that to toughen the kid up? Is the thought process that you don't want to encourage this sort of behavior because then they'll do it all the time and then you'll develop an indulgent child? Like what is the thought process? Well, the thought process and what we understand about child raising at the moment is that uh, best case scenario is positive uh, reinforcement, like people respond best to positive reinforcement. So that's what you should be doing in uh, as many cases as possible. Uh, negative, ne negative punishment is uh, the second, th second best uh, thing to do, uh, which is uh, removing something from um, the r taking something away in punishment for a bad action. So that is, you know, I don't know, like, um, not giving, like you don't get dessert. And I mean, like if we're talking about ADHD, because we're talking about ADHD, uh, people specifically, um, these have to be completely immediate because if you do not give them immediate positive affirmation, for whatever positive thing they did. It needs to be immediate. The reward needs to be given immediately because it will not help them later um, because they'll forget, because they've moved on to the next thing. You need to be able to be on that as soon as possible. ADHD people work best with immediate reward and immediate punishment. So whatever you take away needs to be immediate. Um, it needs to be something right there, then and there. And like, I can't think of anything off the top of my head. Maybe, maybe like, okay, you don't, you can't um, play video games anymore. Like you're playing, video, you were playing video games. Now, no, uh, for the next five minutes, uh, you don't get video games. For the next five minutes, you go to your room. Like negative punishment. Now, number three on that list is uh, negative reinforcement. So that is yelling at a child or telling them off, telling them they're awful for doing a bad thing. Um, that uh, has more negative um, psychological effects um, in the long term, um, which do not make up for the positive. Uh, like, I'm the these four techniques 
do work. Some work better. Others have very negative side effects. So someone with positive, with negative reinforcement will internalize those thoughts over time. Um, and telling an a, a kid with ADHD that they're lazy will cause them to believe that for years to come and create so much anxiety around the fact that they can't seem to stop being lazy. Um, and then you got number four, which is uh, positive punishment. That is uh, basically hitting your kids which you're going to get that behavior, but you're going to give your kid drama and your kid is going to struggle later on in life with every relationship that they have with every person in their life based on that trauma. So don't. Positive reinforcement is the best best uh, best case scenario. This whole idea of uh, developing an indulgent child is bullshit. Um, it's basically basically it's like oh my gosh, my kid is like sad that he doesn't have a phone. I didn't even have a phone when I was a kid. Fucking like what a what, what a pussy. And just like don't you as a parent want your kids to have a better life than you? Don't you as a kid want, don't you as a parent want your, the biggest problems your kids to have is that they don't, don't have access to the internet? Wouldn't, isn't that like a good goal to work towards? I don't understand the mindset. Like, um, I want to raise my kids to expect, um, better from people than I did, I think. Yeah. I, I want my kids to expect to be treated as human beings, to expect that someone, um, I want them to feel entitled to someone other than them having to bridge the gap between the communication. Because I, fuck, I know how exhausting it is to try and bridge that gap in communication with someone, between me and someone with, with who is not neurodivergent, someone is neurotypical. It's exhausting. And I don't want my kids to have to go through that. For, I want a spoiled, rotten kid who wants the world to be better, who's, who, who, who has a better life than I did. I want that. I want that for everyone's kids. I want everyone to have more than we did. And if you're not working towards that, if you think that punishing the expectation, if you're going to punish high expectations in your kids, I think that you are setting your kids up for failure. Because what are they going to expect from other people? Are, are they you want them to expect um, the the lowest amount from their employees? You want them to expect the lowest common denominator from their partners? No, I want my kids to expect the best from their partners. I want my kids to expect the best from their employers. And if their employers aren't giving them the best, I want them to fucking organize and um, throw all their lots into a bonfire in Minecraft. Fuck, I hate that. I hate that whole like, oh, don't want you don't want to make spoiled kids. <laughs> Fuck yeah, I want to make spoiled kids. Spoiled kids who are who expect better from um, people around them, who understand uh, their privilege as um, as white children. I want them to understand who they are and where what they have comes from, and to expect the best not only for them but for everyone else around them in their lives. The, the thought process is that the child's behavior is the problem. And so we have to fix the behavior by controlling it. Now, actually, the opposite is true. Because if you pick up the child when a child ne has distress, physical or emotional distress, you're teaching the child that the world is safe and they don't have to be, they don't have to be anxious about it. And they can just ask for help. And it doesn't so so good? entrench kind of crying manipulative behavior. How, how it works, Dr. Daniel Siegel, who's a psychiatrist at UCLA and a
Oh, oh no. Oh no. <laughs> Hardest picture ever taken of old Queenie Liz? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So this is, uh, yeah. Uh, so this is uh, good for um, neurotypical people who are struggling with depression and anxiety, like mindfulness and awareness and like, you know, you can definitely make it uh, a lot better. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I don't know if I can put this one on. What was this? Where was this? Who is this? Holy shit. Marcus Sargent. I don't know, I'm going to put it in the um, Discord. Well, if you want to see what that was. That would be a cool album cover. I'm not going to lie very prolific author and mind researcher he says in his book the developing mind that the child uses mm. the mature circuits of the adult brain to regulate its own immature unregulated circuits so when the adults show up in a calm loving way that the child downloads that into his own nervous system and then he, he grows he, he doesn't he's not going to be an infant forever At some point he's going to be a mature adult who knows how to take care of themselves that's a natural process we don't have to teach kids to be independent Independent is nature's agenda because the parents are going to die at some point the mother bear is going to disappear That bear cub yes. has to be able to Look after themselves in a mature Confident way that's nature's natural agenda what right. the mother what the mother bear needs to do is to meet the, the needs of that See, I mean like and honestly like this is this what he's talking about right now is true like make, making sure that um, Your kids aren't growing up um, expecting expecting to be abused from the people that they love is uh, a yeah, avoiding that is a good thing. Definitely. But like everything else you said about ADHD is bullshit. Right. Anyway, let's move on to something else. Oh, what was that that you did? What did you know? Some... The model is you get the kids at a, a very young age uh, and you put them in government schools. They are taught many things that are nefarious, such as that your self-esteem should be a function of this mediocre person in front of the room, uh, that everyone should have the same work hours, that you're forced to be in a relationship with violent people uh, peers that in no other situation are you forced to be locked into a relationship with them with like bullies or just people who are you know disruptive but this it starts with the universities and this was by design the american uh, economics association which was started i think in the late uh, 1890s by richard eli who was woodrow wilson's mentor there and they use they always use orwellian language but the idea is we're training the next generation of elites so basically, you have an entire population who go to these best universities who are taught the same faith. It was the Fabian Society, whose logo was literally a wolf in sheep's clothing. The premise of... Well, How did this go from, like, the classroom to conspiracy theories in, like, fucking one minute? Within one minute, we're into fucking conspiracy theory shit. Was we're going to train the next generation of leaders. They're going to self-identify as leaders because they have the diplomas and degrees, and they're going to go out there and basically be infect and take over the country. And it's going to be this top-down idea. And you see that it's it's per for those are those un uninformed of you. He's talking about the uh, Frankfurt School uh, conspiracy theory, the the Nazi like. 
what is it? What are we looking at? Um, there's a word for it. National Bolshevism? Bol no, like, uh, cultural Bolshevism or cultural Marxism as it's known today. Related through this day. So you have, it starts with the universities, then you have all the journalists and people who work in media who are trained at these universities in the same ideas. And then the final consequence is uh, the policy. I just wonder if any of these people have actually been to a university and actually know how universities work or ever talk to anyone who works at a university. Politician. A lot of people use all these Orwellian 1984 comparisons. And I think the comparison to contemporary terms is much closer to Brave New World. And it's through the use of pleasure and the carrot, because it's a lot cheaper to tell people, persuade people it's in their best interest, go along, uh, you're going to give up your freedom, but I'm going to give you safety. And they'll be champing at the bit to do that. Freedom. And for those of us who are fans of freedom, who regard liberty as a high value, the issue is how do you engage in a polity? Define what you see as freedom really to be. Liberty of use and would rather have every minute of their life, whether through their corporate job or what they watch on TV or what they wear, pretty much decided for them. I mean, the speech what? in The Devil Wears Prada that Miranda Priestly makes about how you're wearing that blue sweater because the people in this room, you know, chose the cerulean jacket five years ago, then it went to the fringe designers, then it became in the mall, then you found it on clearance and you think it has nothing to do with you but it was because we had made these decisions and it percolated down to you and i think that top-down approach i mean edward uh, bernays right. talked about this you 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 you're assuming ed, ed bernays um you're saying that this is by design though Walter Littman talked about this in the books, Pro Propaganda and Public Opinion. This was something that they figured out a hundred years they? ago, uh, specifically during the Woodrow right? Wilson administration. How do you get over the complete you know, fascist takeover of the United States, of course, under wartime premises, and get everyone involved in something that would have been completely alien to American thought just five years prior, that we're going to send all our kids over to Europe to fight a European war. This was a major revolutionary shift in how America regarded its relationship between the state and the population and between America and the rest of the world. Woodrow Wilson was the first president to leave America as president. FDR just went to Panama, but that was like American territory at the time. Uh, sorry, Teddy Roosevelt. They've been at this for 100 years. These are puppets of large Actors, Who's they? Uh, and that's where the focus is. This the they them army I keep on hearing about? Uh, the West. None of that had anything, had anything to do with education. That was just not, that was just um, cultural Marxism. That was just a Nazi conspiracy theory, like rolled up into like weird fucking flash cuts. Oh, so good at saying nothing, these people. Why, why, boys don't go next All right, so this, 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 this guy, this guy, this is that guy. Or should we have a look at this one? Let's, oh, damn. Oh, don't, no, let's do the response first, and then we have the fun. We'll have some fun with Curtis Connor after this. What do you reckon? I reckon that's cool, do you see? Yeah, me too. Um, text. Wrong one. Title. <sighs> there we go. So y'all remember? Yeah, you remember this from before. This is this is this is Noah Samson. We watched the um, video that Noah Sanderson made on um, a Cheeto, who's like hilariously bad, and uh, I, he did a response video to it. And Captain Nazi Pipeline is real. Oh yeah. Really quick before I let the video start, it's on videos like these that likes mean a lot to me. I'm dealing with a YouTuber that has a pretty strong fan base and whose community will come over to this video and press dislike no matter what I say in this video. So even if you usually don't leave likes on videos, if you could really just please leave one now, it would help me out a lot. 
Okay, we got some drama to go over today, so we're gonna do this now. Uh, this is a super, super long video that was made on me. This is 43 minutes and 15 seconds dissecting a YouTube reactionary. This is a video by Noah Sampson, the guy who I made a video on two or three weeks ago called Pathetic Male Feminist Tries to Own Me on Twitter. Now, throughout this video on me, he makes some good points, but he also makes, I think, a lot of bad points that I want to refute. So I'm gonna go over the good points first because I think that he actually had me on a couple things. In this new video, he argues that in my reaction to him, I cut him off before he's able to make an entire point, and that if I didn't cut him off, I would be able to better understand his arguments and then, like, uh, refute his argument. So that's a fair criticism, and if I ever make a video on somebody like him in the future, while they're making- I mean, like, it's nice to know that he said it out loud, but, like, my experience with watching his creators, they usually just say that, and then they just go back to doing what they did. So, interested to see if he, um, moves on from that. That's actually really cool. Based points, I'll try not to cut them off. I do have kind of a thing for not letting the video I'm reacting to run on for too long because I really don't like Twitch streamers who will just sit there and react to videos, you know, completely uncut with no commentary, right? So I actively try to keep my videos more about me talking rather than the video that I'm reacting to. But yeah, sure, when I react to your videos in the future, if I do, I will not pause them while you are trying to make a point. The second good point that he makes is in my video about him, I said that I think it's pathetic the way he lives his life. But the thing I want to touch on is the last thing he says here about the way I live my life. No, bro, the worst is the way you live your life, my dude. So my question is, how do I live my life, Achido? How could you know anything about the way that I live my life? His sense of superiority there was derived from the fact that he went to the <coughs> gym that day and I didn't. But how would he know that? I should have been more specific because obviously I have no clue how this guy lives 90% of his life. So for me to just say that is like, I don't, I don't know what the guy does. I was kind of just like going off of his internet presence because like my experience with this guy is, you know, he shit on me on Twitter saying like, I don't like fat phobia comedy is not funny and it's bad and harmful like i think that that's fucking cringe so i probably just should have said like oh i think it's pathetic the way that you exist online rather than like the way you live your life because that just kind of is like i don't know because i don't i don't know how he lives his life i don't know i feel like the reason i was so inclined to say the way you live your life is because like his his entire youtube channel is you know he's got his entire face cam it's his like full name and his entire internet presence feels very personal like it feels like it's a big part of his life what is so this i just felt game? inclined to say it's pathetic the way you live Are your you life just because like I don't know. It just, it felt like the internet was his life, but it's true. I don't, I don't know how he lives his life. So I, I shouldn't have said that. This is me on July 15th of this year, days before this Twitter interaction, when he felt the need to comment on my weight because I wasn't at the gym or whatever. Oh my gosh, he's gonna fucking- was. I mean, there, like, there's no way you were at the gym on the Twitter app on your phone, like shitting on me, right? Maybe you went before you shit on me on Twitter, bro. I don't fucking know. But yeah, man, like good for you for going to the gym. I see you're lifting now. Like that's dope. I gotta get back to the gym. I took a week off because I was sick, like really, really sick. Like I said, what I don't get though about Noah Samson is if he does go to the gym and he understands the importance of it because like if you go you kind of get why you're going then how does he fall into the herd of people that are like oh fat phobia is evil like I've never ever met somebody who goes to the gym and I know this is personal experience so you know take it how you will but I have never seen anybody go to I think that's it I think this is more about how you live your life dude I think I think that it's cringe how you live your life in that you probably don't have many people around you who are anti-fat phobia because you seem like you'd be an awful person to lift weights around, to be perfectly honest. Fashion police squad? <laughs> Why do I feel like this is going to be, like, something weird and, and, and uh, like, homophobic? Baggy pants, dull suits, sightings of socks with sandals. Okay. Okay. Fuck the police. Huh. Oh. To the gym who is like dude fat phobic comedy is is awful like look what they're saying look at all the jokes they're telling like how can you think fat phobia is this pressing issue but then go to the gym this is the one person like I'm, I'm actually being serious the one person i've seen both in real life and on the internet who talks about fat phobia the way he does but still goes to the gym like credit where credit is due i'm fucking surprised but the videos where you critique fat phobic comedy bro they're just not like they're very bad anyways that's all the good points i think he makes in but this video uh but why? Why are they bad? What problem do you have with them? 
total of two. Maybe there's like three, but I, I don't know, man. He also made another good point, which is when I read his titles in my video, I didn't really explain why they were bad or why I had a problem with it. I just kind of read them and assumed oh, that you guys so just understood like them. what was wrong with them. While you're introducing someone that you're criticizing, you might list off their video titles with some music behind it or something under the impression that your audience will pick up on what's wrong here based on how you normally talk about these issues. So he knows that based on how he's criticized feminism and anti-straight prejudice, in his prior videos, his audience will likely pick up on the fact that the person he's introducing is a little bit weird. A bit of a weird guy. And I've actually done this before in my own content. Here's a clip from a video of mine called Incel Content is Dangerous. Are you sub five, normie, or Chad? How to know when it's truly over. Why the black pill is so underrated in 2021. Four in-depth reasons. 100 black pill so beliefs cringe. in one video. Warning, the gap between normies and chads is growing. Oh, they even have a four part series analyzing the mathematically, scientifically objectively perfect male face. It's a similar thing, right? Listing off this channel's titles and thumbnails in a dramatic voice with intense music. This is done under the assumption that you, the Noah Sampson channel viewer, will notice that having skull shape measurements in your thumbnails or incel terminology in your titles means that you might be a slightly strange guy. Now, you might not have an issue with this. You might feel like this type of thing is meant as a joke more than anything. A shared understanding within a community about the sort of meaning that we draw from from certain signs on the internet. If you think this point is stupid, I can see where you're coming from, but I'll explain why I think it's good. If you think that it's a stupid point, the chances are is that you're part of my audience who already can understand what I believe. You know, maybe you hold similar beliefs. So when you see a guy using the keyword incel in I've never seen someone so dumb enough to admit that what he what he has is a echo chamber without understanding like the actual ramifications of that that's fucking hilarious holy shit in like six different videos of his you already think that it's pretty cringy and you don't need to like hear why but i think it's important that i should sort of explain myself on certain things because a it allows a new audience to get where i'm coming from and not just like pander to my main audience b it also can allow for people to disagree with me to actually like hear what i'm saying rather than just viewing me as an op without like really getting why so sometimes kind of explaining why you think a certain thing is bad or good, even if you don't have to because your community gets it, can be good for outsiders and for people that don't get it. But yeah, I thought that was actually a pretty solid point. All right, time to shit on this guy because, bro, he said some shit I could not stand. So after he showed the clip of himself lifting in the gym to like own me basically, which I think honestly- I knew this was gonna own, come up! And then in post-editing decided to make like a correction to say that, yeah, if somebody calls you fat, the correct response is not to show that you go to the gym. Hey, just wanted to add a note for from the editing booth. I want to be clear in saying that the correct response to someone calling you fat is not to show clips of yourself working out. That kind of sets the tone of the response as you saying, you know, I'm working on it, okay? When you don't owe anyone that sort of response, least of all fat phobic assholes on the internet. I only show this clip here as an example of one type of assumption someone might make about you because of your weight that does have more serious implications for people who are fat and are constantly dealing with fat phobia. I uh, just wanted to clarify that, so yeah back to the video now. This to me felt especially weird because he had basically just destroyed me with that clip, but then he sort of backtracks by saying that if you are fat on the internet and then somebody calls you fat as an insult, don't respond to them by showing that you work out. But now I'm sitting here thinking like, okay, so then if you don't want a person who's fat to epically own somebody by showing a video of them doing cardio or working out, would you rather them respond by sending a video of them eating a cake? Like, I don't get it. Like, I think he just doesn't think you should respond at all, which is- Yeah. 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 If it's not your job to, and you're not like earning anything, getting anything other than like um, hate from fans, their fans or them in, from like responding to them, don't respond. If that's not your thing, if you don't like getting hate and you're not getting paid for it, don't do it doesn't make sense. It's fair, because some people are just trolls. But in what sense do you lose in that interaction? Like, if you get called fat and lazy online, how does posting a video of you at the gym make yourself look bad? Like, it only does good for you. But yeah, I don't know why he added that in. It just seemed a little unnecessary. The second thing is he spends a minute calling me a leafy clone. A leafy clone. Now, if you know who leafy is, you will- Yeah. You're a leafy clone. You'll have already picked up on what I meant here. But if you don't, I'll just play a clip of Leafy now. I mean, first off, you got the streamer that's just sitting there saying, Stop! Stop! 
Stop. Stop. Don't call me fat. My eyes are up here, honey. Oh my god, you want to call me fat? Donate below and call me fat. I even saw this one bitch. Her fucking title of her stream was Don't Donate Insults. Are you serious? Looks and sounds familiar, right? They appear to be playing the same video game. He's even doing the same little knife flip thing it's it's incredible i get it if he enjoys this game but like there are definitely some steps he could take here to mitigate the leafy clone allegation is it, uh, it are we gonna suddenly get like a, a speech into what this game is and why it's important and the, the knife flip completely missing the point of the thing um and deflecting from the fact that he is in fact just a leafy clone this isn't a major point in the video, but I just found it funny the fact that we were playing CSGO and both clicking mouse one to use the melee on the knife makes it so that like, like we're the same person. I make content in the same oh, format look. as Leafy, as in I speak over gameplay rather than a face cam. And I guess me and Leafy both criticize things, but Leafy got banned off YouTube permanently two years ago. And I make videos on different topics than he did, so I'm what you would call a gameplay comment. So he hates furries, apparently. All right, what's going on, guys? I hate the trombone. What is she gonna say? I'm curious. I think he might have been a a bit younger than me. He was 16. Whoa! That's a, that's gotta be bait, right? Shut up. Just kidding. Okay. <laughs> Tripping! It's International Pronouns Day. I'm a non-binary elementary school teacher, so- Okay, pause. I'm cutting you off. International Pronouns Day. Are we serious, dude? Apart from the fact that that is a completely, utterly stupid thing to celebrate, the LGBT has- Oh wait, has sorry, I accidentally clicked on Leafy's month. video. Hold what? on. Oh no, wait, that wasn't Leafy. Oh, okay. Guys, hilarious. Ugh, no. Oh, and it's the it's it's the um it's the discourse. It's the it's the aerial okay, so today discourse. We're talking about something that has gone ridiculous. Now, like I mentioned, I haven't watched the film. I have no interest in the film franchise. What has interested me, though, is the conversation slash controversy surrounding the film, basically being that the main actress playing Ariel is black. Now, on the off chance, if you don't know what Ariel the Disney princess has looked like historically, I'll put up a picture on screen. So you can see, right, it's made by a black woman. Now you don't want to see it. That gives me a very weird vibe because I have to question why you were even going to watch the movie to begin with, right? Because when I think of watching a movie, I'm thinking of so many companies doing something for Pride Month. It's because their scores go up basically after they do oh, something. Oh, someone that's was trying to, someone, someone was doing something, um, try, I, I responded to Matt, to a, um, Matt Walsh tweet, tweet, hold on. Oh, hey, three. There we go. This guy is hilarious. It's so easy to trigger. But yeah, they, 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 I saw this, the rally to end child mutilation, and I got really confused. Um, and so I responded with, didn't take Matt Sh Walsh for an anti-Semite. Because, like, I, I, I'm, not un I'm not understanding, like, what he's talking about here. And, uh, this is the response. Pronouns have you away as an I idiot. But the correct response to people like doing that is just to respond with um, like the same gif over and over while they pr tried to call you, call me a dude. So I'm just like the dude abides and then just, just respond. The dude abides. Fucking annoys the shit out of them. Like so easy to trigger those I'm oversimplifying it, but you 
Anyway, let's back to the, the Terry video. channel. I wouldn't really call myself a leafy clone. Anyways, that was a small thing, but it was just like incorrect. Like if we're going to use your own logic against you, then I could call you like, I don't know, who's somebody who sits in their room with their face cam and talks not. about fat phobia. So the next point, and I would say this is one of the most important points in the video that really, really also, made first me time chat. and I think was just Welcome. like wrong in so many ways, was that this guy tried to insinuate that my videos contribute to hate crimes. So this is a crazy fucking claim, okay? To, to say that a YouTube YouTuber either directly or indirectly contributes to <sighs> actual hate, violent crimes, right? Like people. Yeah, it's it's an established and uh, it's currently a burgeoning field of study, but uh, it's called uh, stochastic terrorism. The idea is that uh, if you have like a like a hundred thousand subscribers or a hundred thousand viewers that watch your channel, at least at least you know. Uh, uh, there's a percentage of those who are unstable enough to do the shit that you um, say as just jokes on your channel. Uh, it doesn't matter whether you're intending to do these things or not. Um, these things happen. These things happen. There are established cases of how this, this stuff happens. Kind of like how that lady, um, that, that, that um, mentally ill lady um, uh, stalked the father of one of the Sandy Hook um, murdered children after watching um, Alex Jones. Like, that's what stochastic terrorism is. That's what it does. It just provides, it adds your voice to a crowd. And uh, since you're part of that crowd, that's f fucking partly your fault. Soz, not soz. Like shootings, right? And stabbings and murders and all that, right? Like to insinuate that somebody is at all tied to that is a huge claim. So here I, ha I have to assume that he's going to have like a mountain of evidence to prove this. So he tries to prove this by saying in my video, Psycho TikTok Mom accidentally gets exposed that I'm an idiot for reacting to a Libs of TikTok Twitter post. Where he watches a clip posted by the Libs of TikTok Twitter account of a mom supposedly being exposed by her son for convincing him to be gay. Am gay or lesbian or any of that, she doesn't care. All she cares about is that I'm a part of it. And if I'm not a part of it, she'll try to convince me to uh, um, get, join it. Cause I- What? Are you saying right now? Nah, let him finish. Let him finish it's because cute. he almost just exposed you, bro. Bro literally said, if I'm not a part of the LGBT community, my mom would try to convince me to join it. Nah, bro, that is not right. But later on in that video, Achito plays the full clip in context and acknowledges that the mom was not doing that that she had not been exposed and that the kid had gonna to to So before with. we get to him accusing me of indirectly adding to hate crime statistics, he thinks that I lied about what happened in that clip because I said in the title that TikTok mom gets exposed. Originally in the clip, it looked like the son was confessing on TikTok live. Yeah, like that. That if he wasn't- I don't understand how these guys can just admit to the shit that they're doing and then say, Oh, but no, no- Member of the LGBT community that his mom would try to convince him to join the community. Later on in the clip, it turns out the kid didn't know what the word convinced means, and the mom was saying, No, I wouldn't convince you to join. But I never changed the title because, believe it or not, the video is not Psycho TikTok Mom Gets Exposed for trying to convert son to be gay. The title is just TikTok Mom Gets Exposed, and I still think she got exposed as being a bad parent because later on in the clip, the kid goes on to say, I am pansexual slash gay you know this is an eight-year-old by the way i feel like eight-year-olds shouldn't be on tiktok live talking about their pansexual attraction just my opinion then the kid also reads a message in chat that he didn't like and was like shut up bitch and then the mom like laughs so i'm just basically seeing a mom who's streaming on tiktok live talking about pansexuality with her eight-year-old son and then her daughter with bright green dyed hair and then the son is cussing up a storm on stream and i'm just like man like okay you're a mom but you're not a good one bro you're getting excited Holy shit, dude, have you never been- wait, I, I, I really want to know how old Dechino is, because, like, he's either really, really old or really, really young. At the end of the day, like, have you never heard of- like, no, he's playing he's playing Call of Duty or whatever the fuck it's called, Command and Conquer, he's playing Command and Conquer earlier. Has he never been in the fucking chats? Has he never been in the fucking chat room with, like, an eight-year-old calling you an N-word? Like, that- okay. Wait, do these people, like, want to want censorship or not want it? Like, what about freedom of spirit? 
exposed on your own TikTok live as being a bad mom. So I don't know. He tries to say that I, whatever. And Ali gets exposed. Dishonestly framing the content in this way is playing into the whole gay agenda, LGBTQ groomer panic. One that is stoked by demonic accounts like libs of TikTok and then echoed by useful idiots like Ichido and has led to literal hate crimes. Just yesterday, another bomb threat was called into the Boston Children's Hospital all over a false what story, not unlike this one, being spread by that media pipeline. So he like very quickly goes from a Cheeto was apparently dishonest for framing a video a certain way to a bomb threat was called into a fucking children's hospital and he's an idiot for not being more careful with what he talks about because then he could make a video that's gonna make somebody threaten a hospital. Are you out of your fucking yeah. mind, dude? No, I don't care if you call me an incel or a fat phobe or a cyber bully or anything like that. that. That means nothing to me. But for you to basically say that I am a gateway for terrorist threats is kind of where I'm gonna draw the line. Noah, none of my audience are terrorists. Nobody who watches my videos is influenced by terrorist ideologies. And if you do hold terrorist ideologies where, where you're gonna threaten to hurt people in real life, unsubscribe and leave. You are not welcome here. Playing into the whole gay agenda, LGBTQ. Must be a child, like... Just an edgy, this guy must be an edgy teenager or something that doesn't, doesn't really, hasn't really grown up yet. <laughs> and like, no argument against it at all. It's just like saying, oh, I'm against this now, I disavow. I'm like, cool, yeah. How many times did you hear the word disavow during the Unite the Right out rallies? Fucking hell. You groomer panic. One that is stoked by demonic accounts like libs of TikTok and then echoed by oh. useful idiots like Ichido. He's saying that by making a video reacting to a TikTok that I am ramping up the amount of anti-gay panic in the country. I don't know what exactly you think I, I said, but nobody's gonna watch that video of me talking over surf gameplay where I'm criticizing one shitty mother on TikTok and then think like, wow, yeah, gay people, big problem in this country. Gotta get rid of them. But you're um, signal boosting the uh, person who um, instigated the bomb threats against the children's hospitals. You're like signal boosting that shit. I, I don't know. Like, seems to me like you're wrong. All over a false story, not unlike this one, being spread by that media pipeline. So I don't know what he's talking about, what story he's talking about, which led to this threat being called in, but I doubt the quote unquote story was a clip of a TikTok live. So associating me with like violent crime, I think is a low blow and inaccurate, by the way. Moving on, another crit- So yeah, he has no idea what's going on there. So I <laughs> Not gonna bother, not gonna bother looking that up or looking into it at all. You're just gonna say, no, nah, no, nah, it's about terrorism. No one's a, no, no one's a terrorist in my, in, in my, in my chat. Um. Uh, <laughs> Internet dispute to fucking terrorism. I love how people are, are like saying that 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 this is has anything to do with like a dispute between Cheeto, a, a Cheeto and Noah Samson as a personal thing. This blows my mind that people aren't able to separate themselves from the parasocial relationships between streamers and stuff. Like they actually think that these people actually know each other and talk to each other. Uh. Uh, you're all human versions of splinters. Okay. Noah's fan base. Don't want to be captain of obvious, but commentary section. Yeah, no shit. Um.
<laughs> Are you chinless too, like Titan Leafy? What the fuck? I, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. I don't really want to fucking call it. I, I honestly, like, I'm bouncing between, like, this, this is just a fucking child. So, like... I wish I could, like, see what their, what his normal fan base actually, like, says, like, rather than looking at a video. Um, let's have a look. Let's find some anti-LGBT content. Trans people who don't make their whole personality and act like everybody else, where my gang at? Absolutely no response. It's Pride Minute. It's all, it's all reactions and areas will allow. Kids, 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 kids. Yeah, like, it's just, just kids. I mean, this is kind of what I mean. Like, this is the point, though, like, uh, yes, I had to scroll through a lot, but, like, uh, this is the point that is made. Like, you scroll through a hundred uh, comments, and then you find this. Bring back eugenics. Uh, remember the Stonewall riots, mostly led by black lesbians. Oh, are you fucking kidding me? Um... Wait. Oh, it's a channel member. Okay, I'm just like so confused. I'm like, wait, is he commenting his own his own video? Who refer to me by my name? Unlike you, blue herd liberals, I don't have pronouns. I don't have pronouns. You will refer to me by my name. You just used a couple of pronouns there, buddy. What pisses me off is that people in the LGBT get a month and the people who fought in the war get a day. Alright. Did the people in the war, who went to war, get genocided? Fuck bootlickers. But yeah. Every now and then you do get you do end up with like the people who like say I, I need I need to understand what this is. I don't know whether this is, uh... I don't know how... Whoops, sorry guys. No.
I'm looking for... I'm seeing a lot of shit. Does anyone know where the vitamin um, word comes from? Oh, okay. Oh, I see. So it's either got to do with rape or uh, with Jewish people, maybe. Do do do. Sorry, guys. It's, 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 uh, so there's two, it looks like there's two, two uh, possible definitions. Um, could be some form of like uh, anti Semitic thing, could be a rape, a rape thing, or it could be a, uh, Fucking, uh, like a pedophilia thing. So vitamin. Mm. Like, this is this is why I hate this this fucking shit. See, I'll scroll through here, right? I'll scroll, I'll scroll through this whole thing to find what I'm looking for, and I'll see one person who says eugenics, and then like I'll be like scrolling past, and people will be seeing vitamin and vitamin and vitamin. And I'm like, wait a second, what the fuck is this shit? Could be like the video itself, though. Could be something in the video itself. I'm not gonna watch the video though. But yeah. Likely to be some form of dog whistle. I'm very interested to find out what it is, though. Let's watch. The criticism that I made about response, him though. in my original video was that he had just randomly decided in the middle of his incel street interview video to say that there was a person named Kevin Samuels and he's late but not so great. It basically had nothing to do with the video. There is no respect that I will afford to Kevin Samuels or anyone as part of the manosphere who dies. Uh, you, I. I, I don't I don't have any respect for I, someone dying doesn't change my level of respect for them. I don't understand what the fuck is the point. Like this is this is why I think that this kid is um really young and I'm not singing. I need to delete that mode. <sighs> and felt incredibly uncalled for because this man, Kevin Samuels, had died in May of this year. I originally had yeah. said that he died last year, which isn't even true, bro. He died this year. He died a and couple of months that... ago. And basically, I just found it hypocritical and immoral of him to be, like, shitting on this. I mean, like, and those who knew the man personally, uh, like, the man, Kevin Samuels, not the brand, Kevin Samuels, I'm talking about the man. Those who personally knew yeah, Kevin Samuels can mourn their, mourn their loss. Uh, my heart goes out to you. 
but to the Kevin Samuels, the um, the the brand, the pers- the parasocial entity that we know, this guy after fuck he that died guy. like earlier this year of a heart attack, yeah. but still try to take fuck the moral him. high ground in videos where he will criticize fat phobia. Now I want to go over his response because it's not good. It's one of the things that seemed to bother Achito the most about my video. It was my comment about Kevin Samuels, where I called him the late not so great Kevin Samuels. The late not so great Kevin Samuels. What? Bro, this guy died last year and you're like shitting on him? Are we just gonna skip over that, bro? This guy died of a heart attack and you're like shitting on his takes post-mortem? What? That's so, like, low. Like, by the way, this is a guy who's gonna complain about fatphobic comedy being hurtful, but at the same time has no issue just shitting on a guy who died of a heart attack, like, a year ago. Like, what's wrong with you? Like, everybody who thinks this guy has such a good moral compass because he's gonna call fatphobic comedy hurtful and violent or whatever, he's just gonna go and do this and nobody bats an eye? Okay. So, Achito no. here says that criticizing Kevin Samuels' takes post-mortem is low of me to do. And at first, I wanted to ask why. Well, to answer your question why I think it's low to shit on his takes post-mortem is because so I see, I see that he's like immediately stopped listening to um, the li listening to the argument and decided to jump in. He doesn't doesn't care. He's like so up in arms about this issue as if it fucking mean is meaningful in any way to like this shit. Fucking lol. As A, it is completely and utterly one-sided. I don't think he's gonna be able to counter-argue with you if he's dead. I'm not saying he would if he was alive, but there's a 0% chance that he can now. B, Good. I believe in the concept of letting somebody rest. Like, if a rapper dropped a song and then died the next day, it would feel weird to see a lot of people being like, Dude, this song sucks! Dude, this guy can't make music! Because while these are opinions that you are allowed to have, the fact that a real human being lost their life, I believe, takes precedence over the fact that you dislike their song in the same way that this guy's family is grieving and he's just like the guy contributed to oh okay all right no no, no. let me explain it to y'all okay i get it now so to cheat a cheeto kevin samuels he doesn't really see the problematic part of what kevin, kevin samuels did or spoke about like oh every problem i don't know whether he's i'm not going to say that he hasn't that hey he hasn't uh researched it at all because i don't know maybe he has maybe he does hasn't maybe he knows who kevin samuels is maybe he doesn't who fucking cares uh at the end of the day kevin samuels is a piece of shit who um fucking led to like a generation of like black men with really toxic image to to have real toxic views of themselves and of the people around them perpetuating like awful stereotypes about women I, I i'm just like well yeah no shit people are glad that he's gone he's a piece of shit and people are glad that he's gone literally dead i feel like the fact that you disagree with some of his takes about like women and relationships is unimportant it's not about having a difference of opinion kevin samuels is perpetuating a fucking problem it's like how you don't believe in um uh, uh stochastic terrorism uh, how you don't understand that concept i mean it's okay you don't have to understand everything that fucking happens in the world but at the very least you should maybe have some humility and understand that, like, being dead does not mean that you are immune from criticism. Like, it'd be like me saying Lovecraft was a racist piece of shit, and this guy's just like, whoa, man, Lovecraft is dead. You can't say that about dead people. I'm like, he called his hat the N-word. Like, people of the time weren't even as racist as he is. He was, sorry. Hmm. Fucking L, I guess. Plus ratio. Who knows? At this point, you know, like just because someone dies, does that mean we're not allowed to criticize their actions in life? Is it by virtue of the recency of his death that this has upset him? He mentions that Kevin Samuels died just last year. If that's too soon, then when am I able to make this comment? So I think you can definitely criticize people's actions in their life, especially if their actions are horrid. Like if somebody dies who, I don't know, like killed people, there is no respect to be had for them after they die. Right? You shouldn't have any respect for someone who, like, talks about women like Kevin Samuels did. Well, we got a perfect answer for it, I guess. At this point, like, don't respect misogyny. 
fucking problem solved. Maybe? I think? Could be. Problem solved, right? That's a problem that can be solved. Right? Right, like people say, rip bozo, I'm smoking the pack, like it happens. But what did Kevin Samuels do that you think is so bad that you need to shit on him even after he died? Because all I'm hearing from you is that you think he is a misogynist. He didn't go out and shoot a bunch of people, so this whole actions can be criticized thing doesn't really fit. From what I know about this guy, he just talked. <laughs> and to answer your question of how long do I have to wait until I get to insult somebody who died, which is a weird question, well, I don't have an exact date for you, but I would say, like, I don't know, in the same year, let alone five months after this guy dies of a heart attack, I would probably say you don't need to chill on- This is why- this is, like, why I feel- I'm starting to feel a little bit bad for this guy. Like, I think he's just a kid, like, who sounds older than he is, I think, maybe. I- I just think that he's got some growing up to do, and we can probably- we well, can probably be a little bit more understanding of, you know, kids being kids. Yeah. You know, I guess, yeah. I think this is just a dumbass kid, to be honest. We should give him a little bit of slack. Um, but then I thought about it and realized that, well, based on the content that Nachito probably is surrounded with, which is without a doubt closer to the manosphere than I am, Nachito might just have no idea why that comment is, in my opinion, justified. And he's someone who might actually benefit from hearing an explanation. Oh. So let's do that. Kevin Samuels sucked not because he had a heart attack, but because he was a misogynist, a grifter who built a massive platform by exploiting the embarrassment and degradation of women, specifically black women. He parroted conservative talking points and massage noir to a million dudes online who went on to spread this message across the web and world. A message that focused primarily on humbling women and holding women accountable, which when done on the internet via content and to women you do not know, is really just code for putting women down. We've been over this. It's the same thing we saw Achito do in his reaction. She needs to be humbled. What? Like, what? <laughs> it's the same thing we've seen Sneeko doing in prior videos. Okay, so I was right. This guy talked on the internet and I, like criticized women. So therefore, oh man, that guy had no value while he was alive, so his death doesn't matter. Like, what are you trying to say? I also find it really weird how after he describes the things that Kevin Samuels says, like, women need to be humbled, he then finds a clip of me saying that a woman needs to be humbled, which is sort of implicit in the way you framed that is that if I died, like, that would be a W for you, which I guess in your point of view makes sense because you believe that I contribute to domestic terrorism, that I am a misogynist, I'm a fat phobe, and I'm a leafy clone. Now, even though I know as you know, being me, that none of those are true, except the fat phobic one, like, I, I guess I am fat phobic technically, but whatever. Even if all of those were true, bro, I, I, I don't think I deserve to die. And I know that it's gonna seem like I'm playing the victim card here, but I'm just interpreting the video as he made it. Listen, I don't think it's Noah Samson's job to care if I die. Like, I don't, I don't think he should, because he doesn't know me, right? I just think it's ironic because he's also sponsored by, like, Better Help, which is like a therapy thing, so if I killed myself because of this video, I just think it would be so ironic. Okay, finally, the last awful point that this guy makes is that because- What the fuck? Dude. Like, what the fuck? I, I don't know, how do you even respond to that? The guy's just- the guy- the guy's just like, acting as though, um, fucking hell- How do you- Whoa! That's just like, giving me, like, insane levels of whiplash right now. Uh, the way he's framed that is as if Noah Samson told him to go kill himself. What? We're talking about Kevin Samuels here. Like, yeah, he, this, oh, what the fuck? Some people are just amazing they're just amazing i don't even know how to this i don't know how to describe this this is just incredibly amazing stuff like i don't know how how how, how do i how how to respond to someone who got so very butt hurt on this issue, like this butt hurt. Yeah. 
He took, I mean, he took that so fucking personally. I reacted to the It's Complicated channel, aka that street interview channel that I- my audience is impressionable to misogynistic ideas. So here Achito disputes my claim that this channel wants women to be seen and understood as liars. He says that there is a maximum of three people that interpret this content in the way that I am describing. However, as I showed in my video, this is not the case. The following were just a few comments from the street interview comment section. Never underestimate a woman's ability to avoid accountability at all costs. I had an argument with my eight-year-old niece yesterday. Okay. I truly believe the thought processes and childish antics between my niece and these women are no different. The level of egos with these below average women is astonishing. These statements, which all generalize women as being childish, irresponsible, or egotistical, have all been favorited by the It's Complicated account owner. Okay, so you want to know what woman they're talking about? The woman in the videos. The people commenting on the video, believe it or not, are talking about the video. They are not talking about the species of women that exist in the entire world. They're talking about the handful of delusional women that spew crap in these types of videos. Additionally, while Achito's comment section isn't quite as bad as the street interview comment section, there are definitely still some iffy comments. These women are a 12 out of 10 on the stupidity scale. Guys, calling somebody stupid is misogynistic, by the way. I hate that some women act like this. It's embarrassing. They just take one insignificant aspect about themselves and try to make it praiseworthy because they have nothing to bring to the table. Hey, retard, you realize a woman commented that, by the way. What in the narcissist is going- what? How does that fucking change shit and how do you know that they're a woman? Good. Wait. What? How do you know that they're a woman? on here. Seriously, the selfishness and overall negative personality qualities is 12 out of 10. Did you guys know that calling somebody selfish and narcissistic is misogynistic now? <laughs> Dude, what is this argument? Anyways, I think I'm done here. I'll go back to uh, bombing hospitals <laughs> as I uh, frequently do. Holy shit. What a fucking idiot. Ugh, quick break. P quick, quick break. I reckon with some satisfaction. Sorry, for now, before I get bored and do something else. Hmm. <sighs> Wait, what, what? What, what? In the butt? Oh, the, the the him saying that he's just gonna bomb bomb a building and stuff that that was obviously a joke, stupid joke. But you know, I don't know. Like, uh, it's hard to have a reaction to something which isn't a real reaction. It's just like, uh, I just feel weird because I do this live. I do this live, and I struggle a lot. Some I'm still learning. I'm still learning. Um, and that's not an excuse, but I'm still learning how to, you know, do this stuff. No, no, no. I mean, like, report it for transphobia and fucking misogyny. Uh, I don't know. Do what you want. Honestly, I, I don't really care. Um, I really don't. Um... But he seems like a dumbass kid, is all. He just seems like a dumbass kid who, who's just being trying to be an edgy Leafy clone. I see no difference between the clips people have shown me of Leafy and, like, anything else, so... You know. It's weird how that metal beam that, that I had up before didn't work, but now they're working again. I'm, I'm really weirded out by that. But yeah, I don't know. Uh, 
It just seems like he's drawing on a very... Uh, it's not that I think that he's dumb. I mean, like, the things he says is a, a dumb. I, I'm not trying to, like, be ageist about this because, like, there is some ageism there and it's fucking frustrating when to when someone says, Oh, you're still young. Oh, you have so much to learn about the world. And, you know, that's cringe as fuck at the end of the day. But I think... Uh, but at the same time... Uh, it just smacks of someone who really doesn't understand life. Really? Yeah. It worked that one time when I was reacting to that guy. While I was reacting to him. He must have done something. Shoot. Oh man, doesn't work. Heck. So I'll have to figure out a way to make it go down by itself. Maybe I'll just, um, yeah, I'll just mountainize it. Sounds really freaking quiet though. There we go. Got some sounds. Alright. That's, that's the thing. Ah! Is that gonna stick through? It's gonna stick through a little bit, but at least it's gonna fucking work to a certain degree. Ooh. Right. 
has come to my attention that kilos of heroin have gone missing from the evidence locker. Now, I don't know which one of you it was, but I intend to get to the bottom of it. <laughs> Chief, I saw Officer Nick handling evidence for hours in the locker. Is that true? Yes, but that's because I work in evidence. It's clearly Elias. Hey, Elias has been working very hard undercover at the opioid factory. He is clearly very tired. But you guys break the law all the time. Hey, police brutality is one thing. But stealing from the evidence locker? When I mean, you could have just asked. I have to throw the full weight of the law at you. Four weeks suspension. Could have just pay. asked. Now, Elias, I know you're tired, mate. But you're the best damn cop we've got. I need you out there on the beat, mate. Can you do it for me? Very funny. <laughs> right. Oh, that's right. Furries. We gonna learn about furries from... Furries kinda. It's cringe and furries. I know you've been waiting for this monkey gamer. Look at me, I'm back home. I'm back home, finally. I am back home from tour. I have a couple weeks off until my show's on the West Coast at the end of October and beginning of November. Going to those cities, some tickets are still available. Come see me. Feels really good to be home. But I'm gonna be honest, I am really gonna miss waking up in the middle of the night in a cold sweat because I'm scared that the new bus I'm on is also gonna catch fire. Yeah, my old tour bus caught fire, if you didn't know that. I'm never gonna stop talking about that, okay? That will be- my tour bus caught fire. I fucking love furries. Don't, don't, never attack my, my furry friends. Will be my last words in this life. But since I'm home now, I actually had some time to sit down and script a longer video. A little disclaimer, this video might be a little different from my usual videos. You know, my videos where I'm like, I'm watching a video and I'm like, Huh? What the fuck? What the fuck is this? This shit is nuts. Old Curtis Connor videos? That's the original. That was the old one. Dang it. Uh, where is it? This is the old one here. Yeah! That that was that was the original intro song that was fucking Yeah uh, that was such a good good thing. But... If I was this guy, I wouldn't be so fucking nuts. There's a specific topic that I've been wanting to talk about for a while, but I've just been like racking my brain on whether or not I have anything new or interesting to add to the overall discussion of this topic. But the more I think about it, the more I realize um, I've probably never had an original thought in my life. There's been like billions of people and I'm also not that smart. Case in point, uh, when I saw an old black and white movie for the first time in my life, I genuinely thought color just didn't exist back then. So I'm dumb. But I think I still need to talk about this because unlike the rest of the pop- That's not actually a dumb thing. That's that's something actually is is a part of our um growing up. Like we actually consider things to be old if they if they are put into like sepia tone or black and white because of the way that we've grown up. It's, it's I have a very unique perspective and I think I need to share my thoughts as a white male. So today I would like to talk about- Also while I remember as well, I've finally started uploading my old um, VODs to my YouTube channel. Um, gosh, I only just 
remembered that. So if you want to check that out, if you want to subscribe, feel free to subscribe. You don't have to. Um, but yeah, if you want to support me, just... Oh my gosh, the views have gone up. Oh, that's cool. Yay, if there's actual views on these things. There's actually fucking views on it? Holy shit, what the fuck? When did that get to 100 views? Hold on, I need to I need to look at this. This 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 is interesting me because hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, uh. Um dashboard. What? Oh yeah, I deleted it. Freaking thing. Dismiss. Huh. Oh, I didn't realize that that had so many hours, so so much like reach on it. Like uh, the debate, bro. Um, the Vosh React thing um, it hit a hundred uh, views, which I think is the most views I've got on a video so far. That's actually pretty cool. Um, but yeah. Oh, they watched actually a whole fucking minute of it. That's interesting. Yeah, okay. That's really cool. Oh yeah, my uh, views jumped up by about seven in the last uh, two days. Well, eight in the last two days of views. Wait. You've watched eight hours of me? Oh. That's so cool. Sorry. Whoa, there's advanced modes. What the fuck? Whoa. That's so cool. No, no. Sorry, I'm just being weird. You. You made a meme. <laughs> Never ask a woman her age, a man to salary, a furry fanboy made if he actually cleans stuff. True, they do clean the mess you make with them. Ooh. How many oohs are on this page? One, two, three. There needs to be more oohs. There we go. Added a new one. About furries. And right off the bat, uh, I want to say <laughs> this video is not gonna be just me watching like a furry cringe compilation and being like, fuck, fuck these, these guys. guys. I feel like there's enough of that on the internet already and I don't need to add fuel to the fire. Like my tour bus. I've been wanting to write a video about furries for months now. And I was like, I don't know if I should or not. But then when I was just in Milwaukee, um, I was Milwaukee into the venue and I saw across the street, a big blue <laughs> fox. <laughs> oh, you troll, I love it. fox, a huge furry just walking down the street. And I was like, that's it, that's my sign. It's the first thing I did when I got back was script this video. And also I figured the best way to learn about furries is to write an entire video about them because okay. that's all I really know how to do. Honestly, that I, I can't do much. I Let's don't even learn know about how furries. to do like a smooth transition in my editing software. <laughs> so I wanna start the video uh, with a little anecdote about my introduction to furries because I think it illustrates one of the main issues that the furry community has in today's society because we do live in a society. So back when I was a kid, there was a channel called Spike TV and this channel played the best shit imaginable for a young impressionable 12 year old. I guess young is a little redundant there. An old oh, impressionable 12 year old. It was the channel that played dancers. You know, they also had great shows like Deadliest Warrior.
Yeah, I, 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 yeah, definitely have dirty, dirty ass mirror, dirty ass room. Everything's dirty. Star Rescue. He also had a show called 1000 Ways to Die. Um, if you've never seen that show, it's pretty easy to imagine what it's about. It's a collection oh. of shorts depicting different ways that a person could die. Was, Some of them were inspired by real Discord events, but most really of them were just 100% made up. Like this one. Oh my god, my fart killed you! And look, that's obvious to a 28-year-old. That is the most Canadian thing I've seen all day. Um, but to a 12-year-old, oh my god. I believed everything I fucking saw on television, because I was 12. I was an old also, also, I just want to point this out. That his shelf unit is fucking perfect. Look at that shelf unit. I'm not looking at the stuff on it. The stuff on it is pretty good. Like, yeah, it's cool. But look at the shelf unit. Look at how the glass comes down. I fucking love it. See, I I I I I've, I like shelves more than I like um uh drawers. I hate drawers because if I can't see it, then it just gets de disorganized. I have to be able to see it. Show the show was uh, real deaths, by the way. Year old? Hilarious. Oh my god! I believed everything I fucking saw on television because I was twelve. I was an old twelve-year-old. I believe fucking everything. Okay, to me, the show Ripley's Believe It or Not. Why they call it that? Should have just called it Ripley's Believe It. Cause I did. Also, yeah, why do they call that show Ripley's Believe It or Not when they showed like real actual footage of like people doing like sort of impressive things, right? I looked up that show on YouTube and there's a segment where a young kid could just name any car that he saw. I have salesmen that don't even know as much as he knows about cars. He has a bad dream and I'll do Like someone would ever watch this segment and be like, nah, man. I don't buy it. I don't believe it. So this kid is though. not who he says he is, okay? I hope he can recognize a cop car. Yeah, because he's going to jail for treason. <laughs> sorry. Back to A Thousand Ways to Die. In season one episode- Also, also, I, I, I'm i sorry. I keep on getting distracted, but I want to see if you guys want me to do this. Dusty as fuck. Alright. Should I play Fallout 4 VR wearing this? Dun dun dun. 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 Dun Sorry, I was looking at his. I've been. Look, I was looking at his cool uh, thing, his cool uh, um, stuff that he's got on display. And I thought to myself, "Oh, I got cool stuff. I got cool stuff. Check out my cool stuff." All right. Oh my gosh, I never used to fit in this properly, but now I do. That's crazy. Ta da! Hip boy! I mean, like, I can't do anything with it because, like, I won't be able to see it. But, um, let me show you something cool about this thing, though. I, I, I need to get something for it because this, the, the phone that I've got in at the moment is, like, really slow and disgusting and old and shit. Um, this device actually fits a phone into it and it works in the game like this 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 you have an app which works with the game um yeah which is really cool it'd be really cool as well to actually do stuff with this and make it actually like functional some of the extra stuff functional there's buttons in it which make it light up and shit that's not all I have. Oh no. I'll be right back with some other cool stuff. Huh. What's that bit from? Why is that bit come out? Stay down. You're not supposed to be like that. Alright. No, I need I do need to get a nice phone for it.
This has got some dust on it. Whoa! Well then, I want to see if this fits. Damn it, it's so close! I need a small- I need a smaller phone. A small but, like, cheap phone. Oh well. So this... is a special edition thing that I have. For Fallout 76. I don't know if I've shown it on screen before. But it's pretty cool. There we go. Yay, I cannot see a thing. How's that? No. Cannot see a thing. I don't think it's got asbestos in it. I'm trying to remember how to turn it on there. Ooh. Where's the button? There's a button in here somewhere to turn it on and off. Yeah, uh, your button. Oh, there it is. Ah! Alright, let's try again. This thing. Like, um, this one is fine. The only problem with this is that it didn't- the- the package, um, didn't have it. There we go. Really? Testing? I don't know if that worked. Oh, yes, it did. It's been there. Yes. And it's got the. I think it's got a voice thing as well. Yeah. It's got a voice modulator. Going. Rob, your weapon! I am the Lord. But yeah, it was supposed to come with a particular thing. Woo! It was supposed to come with a, um, like a proper bag, but, uh, yeah. Mold, nice. <laughs> Must be why I'm breathing funny. Nah, it's just dusty as fuck. Could be mold. Oh, three of a thousand ways to die. One of the ways to die featured a man taking a handful of mushrooms and then stumbling upon a furry orgy in the middle of the desert. And this aired in like 2008. So a lot of people like didn't know what furries were at that point, they weren't really mainstream. So they had to explain it to everybody and here's how they did it. What's a furry? People who like to put on animal costumes and get together for fun things like group sex. And you're probably wondering how this guy dies. Well, I mean let me tell you. So this guy tries to get in on the orgy and he keeps being denied. So he goes to have sex with a person in a bear suit but it turns out it was a real bear and he gets mauled to death. 
Yeah. And this is a bear ripping out your throat after you tried to have sex with it. So this was mine and a lot of other people's first introduction. That's an amazing sound clip, though. This is a bear mauling you to death after having is trying to have sex with it to furries and for the next 10 years of my life my understanding or lack thereof of the furry fandom huh. did not change because this was spike tv right they wouldn't lie to me they wouldn't blow smoke up my ass they blow fire out of it <laughs> but what is a furry really a furry can be many things it could be an artist a writer a fursuit creator, a gamer, a performer. But to boil it all down, a furry is someone who has created an anthropomorphized animal character for themselves or a fursona, as they call it. And maybe they draw this fursona doing various uh, activities. You know, maybe they write True. stories about this fursona. But obviously the thing that everybody thinks of when they hear the word furry are the people who build or hire someone to build themselves a whole like fursuit of their fursona. And why do they do this? Why would you pretend to be an animal? Being a human is so fucking sick, right? I love having opposable thumbs and using them to pay my fucking taxes every year and mowing my lawn and going to Walmart. I love it, dude. Honestly, I get it. Being a human sucks balls like 90% of the time. Dude, every single day, I look at my dog, like whenever he's napping or something, and I'm like, dude, the things I would do to be my dog for a day, just a day. No responsibilities, I can run around and shit and piss on my neighbor's yards. And I get served two square meals a day and a bunch of little treats? Sign me up. I'll get my butt sniffed. I do not give a shit. <laughs> And obviously there's varying degrees of like fursuits and fursonas. Maybe someone just got fucking ears on. Or maybe someone has just a tail. But yo, the high quality fursuits, holy shit. It is not cheap, man. I, I did a little bit of Googling and like a high quality, like full fursuit costs like thousands of dollars. This person, Lemon Brat, makes really high quality fursuits and they start at five grand. That's fucking crazy, dude. Furries are, are not what the media portrays them as, dude. They're not these like weird, like social outcast people or whatever. They're fucking ballers, man. Like you gotta be rich as fuck to be a furry, man. Could you imagine like, you know, you're walking down the street and like someone in a sick fucking like sports car, like a Jaguar, you know, pulls up beside you and then they step out and it's an actual Jaguar. It wouldn't be far off, man. Next time you, you see a nice car, that, per that person is a furry. But again, why would they do this, right? Why dress up in a big fursuit? But the more I think about it, it would probably be a lot of fun, right? Think of any mascot ever. That's a furry, sorry to break it to you. Every mascot is a furry, okay? If you like sports, you like furries, you just do. And mascots have so much fun. You ever seen them? They're always having the Wait, most fun. They can run we around don't have and dance mascots and, you know, and cause like mischief and mayhem. And no one cares, no one calls them weird because that's their job. <laughs> But no, when I do it at the fucking Toronto Raptors games at the at the fucking Scotiabank Arena, they chase me down the court with the Benny Hill music playing. I'm running away from them and they always catch me and they grab me by my shirt and my pants and they toss me out of the venue and fucking dust off their hands cartoon style. It's embarrassing. So I get the appeal. I really do. But Ripley's Believe It or Not, furries actually predate mascots. They also regularly date them as well. But no, oh, yeah. when I when I was hey. researching the origins of the furry community, I stumbled upon a video from Frederick Knudsen. Sorry if I'm pronouncing that wrong, but it was called Furries Down the Rabbit Hole. And that's the name of the series that they do on their channel. But hey, man, maybe change it this one time for this topic. Maybe we could have picked a different name. I don't think we should be going down any rabbit's hole. But this video did a good job of diving into the origins of the furry fandom. In the video, they claim that it started in the underground comics movement in the 70s. And the Wikipedia for furry fandom corroborates that as well. Is that the right word? It is. It also says that some members of the furry fandom attribute the origins to Kimba the White Lion. But honestly, dude, I mean, I have no knowledge of this. At I mean, all. it wouldn't. It would not surprise me to find out that it came from Japan. Oh, but I think it goes back even further. Listen, okay, Viking warriors used to wear the skin of bears in battle. You're gonna look at this photo, 
and tell me this guy isn't a furry? Vikings were furries, <laughs> change my mind. Yeah. Just somewhere in Scandinavia, there was an Uwu clan that nuzzled their enemies to death. Look it up. But as time went on, and as the internet grew in popularity and accessibility, more and more people were learning about this furry fandom. And it got to the point where people were actually hosting the very first furry convention in 1989. And that's the beauty of the internet, man. Bringing like-minded people together who never even knew other people like them existed in the first place. Like, it almost makes you think what would the world be like if if the internet started sooner like could you imagine if there was the internet back in like the 1500s i think the mona lisa would look a little different and of course it was not hard to find a mona lisa as a furry all i had to do was google it i got hundreds of results <laughs> Not bad. And ever since that first convention in 89, the furry population has Wait, why is comment what? What's this? Who just kind of did an old video on furries? <gasps> Two thousand seventeen. Uh oh, am I gonna? Ca oh, is he? Is he cancelled? Has been growing ever since. But obviously, once something that people don't understand becomes popular enough to be in the mainstream. <laughs> this is when we get some criticism. Yeah, we're changing the topic a little bit. With the rise of cringe culture between 2014 and 2016, the amount of furry hatred on the internet was substantial. All I have to do is search furry cringe compilation on YouTube and you'll have enough content to last you a fortnight. fortnight. And as much as cringe compilations are just straight up bullying, some of the videos I have seen of furries are inherently cringe. You know, I'm not gonna deny that, even if Seth Rogen approves of them. <laughs> like the videos of furries at like their house or like a convention, you know, just going about their day. I don't have a problem with those, of course, because you know, that's like a totally normal, acceptable place to do whatever the fuck you want. But like all the videos of furries going to like stores and like just bugging minimum wage employees. Yeah, that's the worst shit I've ever seen, I think. Uh, <laughs> Like, do whatever you want, you know, I don't care, but hey, maybe let's leave the Dollar Tree employee alone. Just a thought. Dude, like, imagine working a minimum wage cashier job just to put some fucking food on the table to put yourself through college or something, and then some fucking asshole in a six foot five... <laughs> just the look of uh, discomfort on his face is just like, ah, uh, why would you do that in public? Like, it's okay to wear your first fursuit wherever, just don't fuck with people, jeez. Fucking fox costume that cost $10,000 starts just fucking poking you. Oh my god, that Dollar Tree would be the start of a forest fire, because I'd fucking burn it Oh, to I the remember ground. that. Again, fucking hell. If it was hell. like an actual fox doing that, adorable. But there's a person in there. There aren't just like eight foxes stacked on top of each other in a fursuit, you know? There's a person in there and they know better. What the fuck? Sorry, I hope. I hope it says sorry. But regardless, I feel like the majority of furry hatred is directed towards their very existence. You know, not at the things they do yeah, or who they I don't are understand. as individuals or the beliefs that I don't understand where the whole hate comes from. It's just like this hatred towards their very existence as, as people who wear fursuits. Like, what, why? Why is, why? Why is have. that such So many trouble? people boil down just the existence of them as cringe. Which begs the real question I wanted to answer in this video. Are furries cringe? To answer that question, we need to know what cringe is. Webster's Dictionary defines cringe as... Uh, what? It's tough to define 
cringe in like the the modern age but i think the act of cringing like that emotion it's a very introspective emotion i think because we often cringe the most when we think about the embarrassing things that we've done in the past right <laughs> like when i had a pixel site in 2005 and i made a page on there where people could send anonymous messages uh, but I wasn't getting any anonymous messages. I wasn't getting any messages at all. So I sent in a message myself and that message was saying how cute and funny I was and that I have a big crush on me. And then I responded to that anonymous message with, oh my God, who is this? Is that cringy? Or is that a heartbreaking story about a young boy struggling with his confidence and wanting to no, feel- No, that's, that's just me realizing that I should have done that and not look like completely sad. Desired by someone. Or is it cringe? It is pretty cringe. I don't know. Aww. And I think that's why we cringe at these cringe Yeah, I know that meme. Sometimes. We see somebody do something- I that know we... that one off by heart. Basically, at, at a convention, someone left a pizza in the hallway um, where, with cum on it. It, like that's the meme. That's the meme. That was coming on a pizza. We would never do ourselves because it would embarrass us or make us feel uncomfortable. So we insert ourselves into that position and we cringe. I honestly don't think we're cringing at that person particularly, right? We're fucking. We're all fucking selfish. When we cringe in our heads, we go, "Oh, I would never do that. Therefore, I am better." Now I can laugh. Now I can laugh at this lesser individual. And I know I literally just said in my last video that cringe culture is dead, but it needs to be resurrected. Don't say it, 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 don't say it. Erect. I know I literally just said that, but one, it was a joke. And two, I think there's a good way to cringe and a bad way to cringe. Like when someone is actively causing harm or a disruption to another human being, there's no way around that. That's cringe. Sorry to Cody and Noel, I'll pay you guys a royalty or something. But dude, drive through singing lady? Cringe. Adam Levine uh, DMs? Cringe. Hate that. Alpha males? Cringe. Pickup yeah. artists? Cringe. Cringe. Are people gathering to appreciate and celebrate a common aspect of their lives? Not cringe. I've watched yeah. so many cringe compilations where the whole video is just featuring kids having the best days of their lives. Oh, you're telling me a small nervous child misspoke at a Minecraft convention in front of thousands of three people? Three hours! What a fucking loser, dude. Cringe. If it was me there, I would have had a beer. And it's the same as Disney adults. Man, I, like, sure, some people take it way too far. Classy Disney. But for the most part, it's harmless. And I also hey. read a study. Honestly, I think that furries are much more creative than uh, Disney adults, to be to be to be perfectly honest. But like, mm, that concluded, 15% of people who would call themselves a furry are actually on the spectrum. So it's like, yo, finally, a way for neurodivergent people to communicate with other people in a way that feels comfortable to them. Hello, it's me. Uh, I'm editing right now. I just wanted to clarify something really quick about the point I was making. Obviously, I wasn't talking about every single neurodivergent person. You know, obviously being neurodivergent doesn't equate to being unable to communicate with people. That's not what I was saying at all. I was just saying, based on the research I've done, for some people on the spectrum, the furry community can provide a lot of comfort emotionally, socially, and even physically, I learned. Also, for people who have like sensory sensitivities, yeah. like that fursuit can be like a physical like buffer between the like you know, fascinating stuff. <laughs> but yeah, I just wanted to clarify what I was saying. Back to me. And even when they do that, people are like, Hey, yo, pause. Wait, did you just say pause? Ah, damn. I'll fucking kill you right now. So there's the cringe <laughs> aspect taken care of. <laughs> well, I don't want to say taken care of. I don't, I've... Yeah, no one's gonna cringe at him anymore. We did it. We talked about the cringe, but what are the other criticisms? Well, there is a big one that I mentioned earlier in the video, and that is the, uh... Sexual nature. Thanks to A Thousand Ways to Die and other pieces of media, furries as a whole are often reduced to the small percentage of furries as a whole. I, and look, I don't want to kink shame anybody, okay? Whatever two or more consenting adults choose to do in the desert, that's none of my business. I think, if anything, it says more about the people criticizing furries for this, you know? Oh, you're a Ferry? Huh. You fuck in that suit or what? <laughs> like, I feel like in any fandom, there's gonna be people who. Like, how many people, like, like, have, have you ever, like, fucked in, like, a work outfit? Like, it just seems weird to me. That's the first thing that people think of. It's like, oh, you're in a cute, fluffy, furry suit where I can't see any of your skin. You fucking that thing? It's just like, uh, how? Like, do you put a hole in it? You're gonna put a hole in a ten thousand dollar fur suit? I mean, like, if you design the hole into it, maybe. But like, who cares? 
<coughs> turn everything into like a weird sex I thing. That thing didn't have right here. Welcome back to Pokenut Year, the challenge where for every day of the year 2022, I roll a random number generator, and the number I get corresponds to the Pokedex number of the Pokemon that I have to nut to for that day. <laughs> so the Pokemon that I have to nut to for that day. Yeah, that is real, by the way. He's, uh, he has not missed a day. But there's proof right there, man. No matter what fandom you're in, there's gonna be some horn dogs ruining it for everybody else. But when it comes to fur- Mr. Mime just likes to stare. Uh, and that's spelled C-O-M-E-S. According to the Daily Mail, only about 4% of furries rank sex as an important part of their lifestyle. But that's also because 90 Pikachu be into, like, electric shocks? Or, like, um, I suppose, what would you do with, um... Ooh, we could melt candles with uh, Charmeleon. Looks like Char Charmeleon would make a fucking awesome dom. Um, who else? Yeah, oh, what is mm -hmm. Mar Marchoke? Marchoke? I mean, like, do we really do we really need to know? Do we really need to 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 explain what Marchoke is gonna do? Mm. Or Marchamp. Mm. Marchamp with his four arms. Ooh, four arms, four limbs. Laying you out. Um, Dragonite would just be like a pat, like a, like run you like a train. Taurus would be deadly. Um, I feel like Wigglytuff would stay for Snuggles. You're gonna stop thinking about this for a little bit. Six percent of furries have never had sex. Oh! I'm sorry, it's a joke. I just, I had to make it, it was right in front of me. I had to write it down and then say it, I'm sorry. In reality, dude, they probably bone way more than like anybody. Remember like the band kids or like the drama kids, dude? And speaking of how you're orientated uh, sexually, I, was a drama I read kid. a medical research paper that said, um, sorry, I'll say that again. I read a medical research paper for this video. Thank you. And that paper stated that 84% of male furries identified as part of a non-heterosexual group. And the surveyed group also stated that, furthermore, male furries tended to be sexually aroused by fantasizing about being the same kinds of anthropomorphic animals to whom they were sexually attracted with respect to gender and species. And this is just me theorizing because I have literally no experience with this or understanding of it whatsoever. But like the world we live in is so fucking awful and mean and discriminatory towards LGBT BTQ plus people. So being able to just don like a fursuit, a fursona where your gender doesn't fucking matter to anybody and no one is like criticizing you or asking you about it all the time. Like that must feel incredible. But one critique that people still have towards furries is that it's, it's weird to be attracted to an anthropomorphic animal character. And I see that critique, but I also raise you this. Oh nice. yeah. I do feel like Disney contributed to a lot of people's furriness. Say more. And I'm not too proud of this one, but I also raise you this. Okay. Dude, when I first saw Kovu in Lion King 2 Simba's Pride, I lost my mind, man. I wanted to be him so bad. I'm not lion, okay? But I wish I was. I wish I was that specific lion. And Disney be like, I am going to create a lion that is so cool. I don't know, man. I've just done so much research and I've watched a bunch of videos about furries the past week. What? Well, nobody, nobody wants to be baddie from, from Fern Gully? Because I just wanted to learn. And I honestly, I wish I did it sooner. Because if I made a video about furries like five years ago, it probably would have just been me watching some fucking furry cringe compilation and being like, these guys are weird, you know? It would just be me making fun of them, probably. And I did that. That's a thing I did. I literally did that. I actually wasn't oh, okay. that harsh in that video, but still, I could have just, you know, I could have just done the research and made this video five years ago, you know? So you know what? Today, what is it right now? September 26th, I am declaring Curtis Town as a furry-friendly zone. Okay? It's official. We support you, okay? I did, however, get tagged in a TikTok from someone saying that they were going to come to my show in their fursuit. Hey, don't do that. <laughs> do not do that. They will not let you into the venue. And even if they did let you into the venue, it'd be distracting as hell. But no, dude, I think I think we need to be more accepting, right? Yeah. Furries are people like you and me. We watch movies, they watch movies. We go to sleep, they go to sleep. We eat french fries, they eat french fries. 
The only difference is they order theirs animal style. And, and that's fine. Because there's more furries than you think. Okay, there's millions wait, of them. Wait, wait, what's animal style? Even some of your favorite celebrities are furries. Literally anybody who's been on The Masked Singer, furries. Dude, Ninja is a furry. <laughs> and that actually makes a lot of sense, you know? Animals don't wear bras. And Ninja's favorite thing is the absence oh, of Oh, it's bras. like a burger <laughs> restaurant thing. And hey, whether you're a furry or not, you gotta eat. So let's hear a word from today's sponsor, HelloFresh. That's right, this video is sponsored by HelloFresh. Well, folks, fall is upon us. I know a lot of you are going back to school. Well, around this don't time forget to support the original busy, creator. You're worried about shopping for groceries and worrying about what you're going to have for dinner that night. And that's why now is the perfect time to try out HelloFresh and their weekly selection of 30 plus recipes featuring fresh produce and 70 plus convenience items delivered right to your door. I know we're all busy literally all the time but no oh my how gosh what the fuck is, is that why can't you just give me the fucking fresh is so great it works with your schedule there we go. plans are flexible and you could change your meal preferences feel free your to join me um address, uh, whatever the fuck it is on the hello fresh app and hello fresh yeah have to be feel free to use his code for that support the original creator if that's something that you want to do i don't like i i hate uh hello fresh unless they pay me this like scary intimidating thing HelloFresh meals have foolproof step-by-step -step recipes and are done in around 30 minutes or less. And look, I know it's hard to eat healthy these days, especially if you're a student and stuff. Like, it's it's tough. But with HelloFresh, you get food that is both healthy and delicious. HelloFresh offers veggie, pescatarian, and fit and wholesome meals to make it easy to stick to your goals. And on top of all of that awesome stuff, HelloFresh is also the very first carbon-neutral meal kit company and nearly all the packaging is recyclable. Here's a little fun fact that I learned. The insulation that comes in the HelloFresh boxes can even be dissolved in water and used as plant food for your garden. Isn't that so cool? And like I said, right now is the best time to give HelloFresh a try because they're hooking up the citizens of Curtistown with a terrific Thinking deal. about my just garden, which is just basically a courtyard. Code Curtistown65 for 65% off. Plus, I make better pizza. Shipping. I've been eating I'll HelloFresh have to every oh. week for like three years now. And believe me when I say, even if, when they Should I do a cooking stream? My videos, I'm I, I just cook. I'll just week. prepare cooking I, shit I and like food. react to shit. That I've, I've never made before. And also <gasps> I want to do this. A better chef yes. in the process. It's great. So I really hope you guys check them out because it really helps me out when this. you guys yep. uh, check out the sponsors and stuff so I can keep making my little videos. All right. Thank you so much to HelloFresh for sponsoring this video and so many others in the past. Back to me. All right. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know it's a little different. Pescatarian. Do, but you know, I kind of mm. like just picking a topic. I don't like the. I don't like the fishiness. It. Um, so let me know what you thought of this video. Like it if you enjoyed it. So maybe I'll, I'll do more of this. Leave a comment. Yes. Let me know what you thought. Let me know if you All right. Something. Well, I'm gonna get. I'm gonna Early, like know get. Thought, I've been you know, wanting to cook pizza for a while. I also and say I will be taking my first. It's time consuming. My first real break slash vacation. There will be so I'll, no I might, I'll, I, If I can get together the ingredients and shit today, then I'll do it. Podcast channel. I'm taking a break, okay? I've been doing this fucking like nonstop for four years, pretty much. It's been a long time since I've been like an actual vacation. So I'm going to take one. I'll probably still be posting on like Instagram and Twitter. So but yeah, I think that's good. So um, yeah, we won't bother watching the, the, the furries one. But, um, yes. Well, all right. Well, I think that's good enough for today. I need to do some editing since I've got so, got some um, the really basic editing. Um, got my workflow sorted, and uh, yeah, I'll um, see y'all tomorrow. So until then, um, take care of yourself, take care of yourself, and um, take care of someone else. And I'll see you next time. Bye. -bye. Ba 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 ba